college football celebrates its centennial year on ABC, the number one network for sports. Saturday, December 6th, 1969, Razorback Stadium, Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the unbeaten and top-ranked Longhorns of Texas, with the nation's most awesome rushing offense, meet the second-ranked Razorbacks of Arkansas, led by quarterback Bill Montgomery, in the battle which should decide the national championship. Silver MacArthur Bowl, weight 250 pounds, symbolic of the outstanding college football team of any given year. Ever since 1959, this has been given to the outstanding college team of the year. Texas already has its name inscribed on it. In 1963, the Longhorns were named the outstanding team, and they hope to put it back up there for 1969, as do the Razorbacks of the University of Arkansas. This is their home stadium, and you're looking at the Astro Turf, in which this battle will be waged today. Tremendous crowd on hand for this truly climax of the 1969 college football season. It's not a very nice day in Fayetteville, Arkansas, but it could be worse. If you're a pessimist, you'd say there's a 90% chance of rain. If you're an optimist, you'd say there's 10% chance of sunshine. But right now, it's very cold. It's about 40 degrees, the wind coming in from the northwest. And although it has not rained during the past three hours, there is a threat of rain in the air. It did rain hard last night. Well, as far as credentials are concerned, coming into today's game, you certainly couldn't find a pair of teams in the country that have better ones in the top ten in the AP poll, the final one of the season. Is Texas and Arkansas, numbers one and two, both nine and zero oh on the season, undefeated and untied. And just to give you an idea of how they have demolished their opponents, there is a look at the record of the Longhorns of Texas, and proud they can be of that. Not only that, but Texas outstanding on offense, 44.3, and on defense allowing 9.8. As far as the Razorbacks are concerned, their record equally as good, 9-0, and and some big scores in there, too. Defensively, Arkansas has allowed 6.8 points per game to lead the nation on offense, 35.2. So there you have the statistical edge, but now let's get the emotional side of this battle from Bud Wilkinson. Well, the emotion is going to be the running attack of Texas against the passing attack of Arkansas. A classic confrontation. One team that likes to set their offense with powerful running. The other that likes to set up their running by liberal use of the pass. So the purists will have a field day today, Bill. Right. Air of expectancy here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Back to talk more about the Texas-Arkansas battle in just a moment. Right now, the Razorback band of the University of Arkansas is poised on the field, and all 46,000 fans here are actually awaiting the arrival of the President of the United States, who is expected very, very shortly. Uh, but what is the timetable? Well, he will be landing, if the weather permits, Bill, in about two minutes. But uh, because of the low ceiling uh, at Fort Smith, it's possible that he'll be delayed a few minutes. Right now, the marching Razorback band getting a tremendous round of applause from all the highly partisan fans on this side of the field from the University of Arkansas. Let's talk a little bit about the contrasting styles, but you touched on it a moment ago. But I think we ought to, uh, first of all, take a look at the Texas offense and the uh, wonderful classic term of wishbone. Well, this is a new offense. You can see the pattern right there. James Street, the quarterback, uh, the fullback, Wooster, is up much closer than the normal fullback, so that Street can step out and ride the ball to him, either leaving the ball in on the first option or bring it back out, and then running the option play through the trailing halfback. So just keep in mind that the wishbone is something you're going to be hearing this afternoon. A little bit later on, we'll be able to show you a demonstration in slow motion of just exactly how it looks. As far as these two teams are concerned, I, I think that the one thing that has to be said about Texas is that they have not this year shown a tremendous passing attack, but the fact is they have scored every 13 plays. In other words, every 13th play they've made a touchdown. That is a remarkable record. Well, let's believe that uh, when you have the running threat that they have, you keep the defense so totally unbalanced uh, because you're so consistent with your offense running, and then you hit that big bomb to Spire, and that gives you that good average, Bill. Now we're ready for the invocation to be given today by Billy Graham. Today, 
that thy blessing will be upon this game. We pray for both sides that not only will we exhibit great sportsmanship, but that we will remember that there's a greater game in life, and that is a game for keeps. And we pray that every one of us will rededicate ourselves not only to God, but to the principles that made this country great. We pray for the President of the United States, and we pray thy blessing upon him and all of the leaders. And we pray that if it be thy will, that we might have peace in our time. And now we pray that thou wouldst protect the players today and keep anyone from serious injury. For we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The invocation given by Billy Graham, one of the distinguished guests here today. Now let's continue. I think we'll just get back to the football in just a moment. Let's, uh, let's have the massed bands here with the national anthem with both the Arkansas and the Longhorn bands. Razorbacks and the Longhorn Band of the University of Texas under the direction of Vincent Danino playing our national anthem. And now, a look at the wishbone once again and talk a little bit about it, but let's take a look at some of the action in slow motion of how it actually works. The Texas pattern is built on the fact that all of the plays start out exactly alike, and that does not give the defense any chance to key precisely what hole will be hit. This is Texas in practice with Jimmy Street, the quarterback, and the first option is stepping out, riding the fullback. This time he gave the ball to the fullback. Let's watch that play again in game action. There's the ride and the kill to Booster. Great block downfield by Coy. And that's the inside power of the Texas attack. Once again, the ride and the kill to Booster. And he hits it inside. Now, when the play starts out, going exactly that way, and he comes off of the fake with the ball, you have the second option. Here it is in practice. Quarterback Street will step out, ride it to Wooster, but this time the quarterback keeps the ball, and as the end flares wide, he turns up inside the end on what we used to call the old split T option. Here it is in game action. Street keeping the ball, turning up inside the end. Again, beautiful downfield blocking by Texas. The third option, of course, is the ride to the fullback booster, the end playing the quarterback, and the quarterback pitching the ball to the trailing halfback wide. Here they are in practice. The ride, the end plays the quarterback, and he pops it out to the halfback with the lead halfback blocking downfield. Let's watch this one in game action. This is the payoff play, the one that goes all the way. And particularly, watch the block that Coy throws ahead of the ball carry. It's devastating. Beautiful timing, perfect lead, and as you said, they are a truly great block. The uh, strength of the running attack of Texas really is that in order to stop those options that we just saw, you have to sort of stand up a little bit and be looking a little bit, wondering who's going to get the ball. And as you stand up, then they come at you with their straight-ahead power plays, and believe me, they really blast it out. Here it is. Play starts exactly the same way, both back leading inside, the line firing out. And if you're standing up looking, they knock you out of there on that one. And, of course, the thing that makes the Longhorns great is not only is that powerful offense so uh, disruptive to another team, but also that defense. Well, Texas 
starting offense defensive football team bill has given up only 37 points thus far this year they've been way ahead as that season record showed many many times so their second team has played a great deal of defense but they are a fine defensive football team uh, do you anticipate you know any problems that uh, they're going to have with the arkansas offense Yes, I think they're going to have a lot of problems because Arkansas today will put their two wide flankers out, Dykus and Reese, and then the inside backs will be running various pass patterns, and the Texas linebackers will have a terribly difficult time to cover them. We'll take a little closer look at the Arkansas offense right after this message. Well, it wasn't too many days ago that uh, the University of Arkansas was in battle against Texas Tech. That was our Thanksgiving Day feature on college football here on ABC. You're having an opportunity again to see Arkansas in action. And let's uh, talk a little bit about the offense, bud. Well, the Arkansas attack, as we mentioned, Bill, is based on their ability to throw the football. And they've got an outstanding quarterback in Montgomery. Here he is throwing to his split end, Dykus. Dykus, of course, has got great ability to move the ball after he catches it. That was the quick, fast, sprint out pass. This is a drop back pass. Great protection, and he gets Morrison. A big, strong tight end over the middle, and Morrison, too, is dangerous after he makes the catch. This is a marvelous execution of the screen pass. This goes to Garber. Garber gets that downfield blocking that has made the screen pass a long gainer for Arkansas. But the thing that puts the pressure on the corner men is the quick sprint out, and here it is again. Montgomery rolling, and this time hitting Reese, the flanker back, one of the fastest men in college football. He's 4-4 in a 40-yard dash. And as Arkansas gets you back out of there with that short, quick passing attack, you're vulnerable for the sweep play. And this is Burnett on the sweep, and once again, straight downfield blocking. Burnett is a name that uh, you may be hearing many, many times, but Bud, you've mentioned to us personally that you thought he was one of the finest backs in the country. Well, I think that uh, Frank Broyles shares that opinion. Uh, Frank calls him a great first down runner. What he means by that, of course, is that he's going to get you four or five yards when he touches the football. Well, as far as defense is concerned, I gave you one statistic earlier about Texas scoring every 13 plays. You know, Arkansas has not allowed a touchdown and except in every 117 plays. You have to be a little impressed with that. Well, this is the immovable force and the unstoppable object again, Bill, but uh, the keys to victory today, I believe, are going to be the ability of Arkansas to keep possession of the football. Texas has had it the majority of the time against all opponents. If the Arkansas team can move the ball well enough with their passing to have it half the time, they'll be very much in the game. The thing to watch for with Texas is the yardage that they make on first down. We'll keep track of that for you because Texas needs to come in there second down and six, second down and five to have the continuity of their running attack be effective. All right, those are the keys to victory, and we'll be back to talk more about this Texas-Arkansas battle here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in just a moment. From Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, this has been College Football Today. This is Bill Fleming, along with Bud Wilkinson and Chris Shackle, inviting you to stay tuned now for NCAA College Football. Today's game for the Mythical National Championship is the unbeaten and top-ranked Longhorns of Texas meet the unbeaten and second-ranked Razorbacks of Arkansas. College football celebrates its centennial year on ABC, the number one network for sports. On the 100th anniversary of college football, ABC Sports presents... the top-ranked Longhorns of Texas meet the unbeaten Razorbacks of Arkansas. This ABC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the game of the year. This is the home of the Razorbacks in the heartland of America, the foothills of the Ozark Mountains. A standing room only crowd of 44,000 are here as the nation's number one team, the Longhorns from the University of Texas, flying in yesterday, are ready to defend their lofty ranking against the number two team in the nation, the Razorbacks of Arkansas. It's almost a storybook setting here today, ladies and gentlemen, as we look at the Razorbacks now coming out on the field. 
the field, artificial turf, astro turf. Although it's been raining for hours, it is not at the moment. Uh, this synthetic turf seems to be impervious to water, and uh, the fans here are such rabid football fans that the weather doesn't bother them at all. And we hope wherever you are that you're comfortable and ready to see this game of the year. Cheerleaders galore, and of course, we're awaiting the arrival of a very ardent football fan here in Arkansas, our commander-in-chief, President Nixon. And they'll be arriving here by helicopter soon from Fort Smith, Arkansas. And here's a man that has arrived on the scene a couple of days ago. And Bud Wilkinson, uh, this must make you feel very much at home because with your great teams at Oklahoma, here we have two super teams battling it out in the final game of the year in this centennial year. Chris, one of the very interesting things about this game to me is that uh, Neither team has any individual player that's high in individual football statistics. Yet the two teams are one and two. Texas, the leading rushing team, the number two scoring team in the country. Arkansas, the number one team, is preventing scoring. Those are the kind of statistics that mean something because, believe me, it takes great individual brilliance, and these teams both have it, but it's a team game after all. Well, you can take a microscopic look at this game, and there are statistics galore, and we'll try not to give you too many because often they're very boring. The third one that I like is the fact that Texas scores a touchdown, a touchdown every 13 plays, and Arkansas, the defense of Arkansas, allows a touchdown only in 105 plays. So something has to give. The way of putting it is that all four of the Texas backs, their quarterback, fullback, and both halfbacks, are averaging right at five or over five yards per try. Bertelson, the left halfback, is averaging 7.6. Well, this is going to be some afternoon. It started out, as you saw, college football today with Reverend Billy Graham and the invocation and uh, the Texas band and the Arkansas band here. And now uh, everybody's not only anticipating the kickoff, but the arrival of President Nixon. Our colleague is down on the sideline on that artificial turf. So we'll bring him in right now. Here's Bill Fleming. Thank you, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we're going to introduce the offense for the Texas Longhorns. At tight end, number 40, Randy Peschel. The left tackle, number 50, Bobby Wunsch. Left guard, number 64, Bob Mitchell. At center, number 52, Forrest Wiegand. Right guard, number 66, Mike Dean. Right tackle, number 62, Bob McKay. At split end, number 88, Charles Spire. At left halfback, number 35, Jim Bertelson. Right halfback, number 24, Ted Coy. Fullback, number 30, Steve Wooster. Quarterback, number 16, James Street. And the head coach, Darrell Royal. Now the defensive team of the Razorbacks at the University of Arkansas. Number 85, Bruce James. At left tackle, number 71, Gordon McNulty. Right tackle, number 61, Dick Pumpus. At right end, number 72, Rick Kersey. Left linebacker, number 59, Mike Buschetti. Middle linebacker, number 64, Cliff Powell. Right linebacker, number 53, Lynn Garner. Left halfback, number 24, Terry Stewart. Right halfback, number 18, Jerry Moore. The monster man, number 49, Bobby Field. Safety, number 36, Dennis Berner, and the head coach, Frank Coyle. Three game activities have been concluded, and we'll be back for the opening kickoff here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Well, we're moments away now from a renewal of a great rivalry, Texas-Arkansas. It's been especially great the last 10 years because the two coaches involved who are great friends, Frank Royals of the Razorbacks of Arkansas and Darrell Royal of the University of Texas. And now going to the center of the field, we have on the far side, number 16, Jim Street, the quarterback, Ted Coy, the halfback, and defensive linebacker, Glenn Halson, number 67 for Texas. On the near side, we have number, uh, we have Jerry Dossey. Cliff Powell, and number 34, Bruce Maxwell, along with uh, Brand 
number 57, who has been designated an All-America. And you'll see why when you see him play. So now let's go down on the field to the referee, Carl Landis. Who will be your field judge, Mr. Lawson, who will be your head linesman, Mr. Strader, who will be your umpire. Texas, you're the best team, and who will call the toss? Captain Street, I'll toss the coin there, and I'll catch it in my hand like this. If I drop it, we will toss it again. Would you call the toss in the air, please? You call tails, he call tails, and it is his. You won the call. You will defend that goal. Captain, will you receive or tip? You will receive. Sir Brown, gentlemen, will you back? Okay, good luck, gentlemen. Lots of captains here. The game of the year. And as you saw, the Razorbacks have won the toss. And they have elected to kick. And a man that was elected to the presidency. Helicopters now beginning to make their arrival off to the right, to the far side of the end zone. This is one of the, what they call the white tops. And uh, there you see it. There will be five of them. It's scheduled that President Nixon will be in the second helicopter. There is a presidential party which will include various congressmen and, sen and senators like Congressman Bush. There will be uh, Governor Winthrop Rockefeller of Arkansas, Senator McClellan, Senator Tower, and a host of others. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Right now, Bud, were you surprised Arkansas winning the toss and electing to kick? No, they've got the uh, wind at their back now with an excellent kickoff man. He's uh, one of the fine kickers at uh, Stockdale. They expect that he will kick it into the end zone and start Texas off 80 yards away from their goal line and then have the wind advantage at their back during this, the first quarter. All right, loosening up that leg, wearing that red jersey, the symbol of the Razorbacks in their home territory, and you'll hear them call the hogs a little bit later on, and there will be hook'em horns on the part of Texas as Bill McLeod, number 19, who is a, a sophomore. He's kicked seven of nine field goals, and he's very accurate on points after 38 of 42. Charlie Spire, you're looking at him right now. What a terrific football player. And on the near side, sophomore Jim Bertelson, leading ground gainer for the Longhorns, number 35. So, once the receivers touch the ball, the clock starts, and the game is underway. And here's McClard's kick with the wind to his back. It's a good one. Through the end zone. And the adrenaline flowed early here at Razorback Stadium before a capacity crowd. And that means that Texas now will come out to its own 20-yard line, defending their number one ranking in the nation with that offensive line. And it's probably the best offensive line in the nation. With a great backfield. From the 20, they're in white with burnt orange trim. The temperature is 39 degrees, but here we go. And Arkansas will be a 4-3-4, but they'll pack a lot of people up on the line. They have 10 within five yards of the ball now. Charlie Spire to the near side. The quarterback is Street. Converging on Jim Bertelson, number 35, from Hudson, Wisconsin, a host of Razorbacks, including Dick Bumpus, number 61, 72, Rick Kersey. Cliff Powell was looking on, number 64, now calling defensive signals to the left for Arkansas. And after a one-yard gain to the 21, it is second down and nine. The second play from scrimmage as we just joined us. Now it's fired to the far side. The wishbone tee in the backfield. A loose ball, and Arkansas has recovered. Jeff Coy fumbled the ball. A first opportunity. There is President Richard Nixon arriving on the scene, and uh, he didn't have an opportunity to see Texas fumbling on the second play from scrimmage. Arkansas recovered. And now they have the ball, first and 10 at the 22. Bill Montgomery is the quarterback. They're on the Texas 22. Make the brunette. And the pass is intended for Bruce Maxwell from Klein Bluff, Arkansas. So it'll be second and 10 for the Razorbacks. Texas is basically a split six defensive football team. Arkansas will change the spacing of Burnett and Maxwell, the two inside backs, in an attempt to make the inside linebackers for Texas, Halsell and Henderson, cover them in the flat. After Bill Powell, a junior, 
defensive player for Arkansas, recovered a 10 point fumble. It is now second down and 10 for Arkansas at the Texas 22. No score. A pass way off the mark because of a tremendous rush put on by Scott Henderson, number 61. As is usually the case in a game with tension high, Chris, the offense takes poise and balance, judgment. The defense comes in awfully high, and at the start of the game, the defense often can dominate, as they appear to be doing momentarily. Now it's third down and 10. Going to the far side, number 25, Johnny Reese, a speedster. In the slot is Chuck Dykus, an All-American, number 20. From the 22 of Texas, Montgomery. Was he inbounds? Yes, he was. Inbounds at about the two-yard line. John Reese, whom we told you, was flat, split to the far side of the field. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is about a 20-yard play. Let's watch it again in slow motion. This is Reese, the wide flanker down the field. Penny Lester moving right with Reese. Reese appears to be going for the flag route, but he turns a hard sideline break, makes the catch, and you can see his foot hit right along the sidelines, and it was a tough, tough call. He might have been out of bounds. The underdog Razorbacks have the ball. They have a first and goal to go at the Texas two as Bobby Nichols, number 27, a sophomore back from Tulsa, comes into the lineup replacing Reese. Maxwell, 34, is the fullback. The tailback is Bill Burnett. As Mr. Nixon now, uh, at his choosing, is going to sit in the stands with all the folks and watch this game. Here we go, first and goal from the two, Arkansas. And Bill Burnett of Bentonville, Arkansas, gets a yard closer. Danny Lester, one of the Longhorns, number 23 on the play, along with Scott Henderson, number 61, second down from the one. Let's watch the pass that put them on the two-yard line again. Reese, then he turns it on down the field. Lester goes with him. It looked like he was going to run all the way into the end zone, but he made a beautiful, sharp sideline break. And this is the tough one to call. I'll let you call it this time. He goes high in the air for the ball. There's the ball in. And it's a very tough one to call. He called that he was inbound. Second and goal. Arkansas lead, Bill Burnett. With Bruce Maxwell blocking, Bill Burnett has scored the Arkansas touchdown and they lead six to nothing. 13 minutes, 33 seconds. And that's very ironic because Bill Burnett's number is 33 on the red jersey. And now trying for the point after is a man who kicked off, Bill McClard. That is Gus Rusher holding the ball, number 17. From our end zone camera. Okay. I'm out at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the score is underdog Arkansas. Seven, Texas, nothing. 13 minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And if you just joined us, Texas fumbled on the second play from scrimmage following the opening kickoff. Bill Powell recovered for Arkansas. And in five plays, they went 22 yards with Bill Burnett scoring. And with the point after, they lead 7 to nothing, and will now again kick to the Longhorns, bud. And once again, they did take the wind when they won the toss. The fired is an excellent kicker. He put it through the end zone in the last kickoff. Arkansas believes that he can put it through the end zone again and start Texas off once more on their own 20, 80 yards away from Pater. Bill McClare, he has a lot of TV time already today. She'll have some throughout the day, I'm sure, a Longhorn cheerleader. Arkansas, 15 straight wins, Texas 18 straight. Back deep, we have Bertelson in the end zone. Number 35, and Cotton Spire turns around, advises him not to run it out, so it'll be a touchback. Coming out to the 20-yard line, Arkansas is in the lead, 7 to nothing. And one more time, looking at the breaks of the game, by way of videotape, here it is. This is the catch, and uh, these are the things that make the difference sometimes between who wins and loses. You can see the ball now as it hits Reese's hands. He's diving for it, and watch where he lights. It's a fast play, but you make the decision, and it certainly does look as though he did hit out of bounds. Charlie Spire to the far side. Texas stays on the ground. And it was Steve Worcester, a great junior fullback, that was stopped by Cliff Powell, number 64. Worcester turns out three tough yards for Texas. 
And the Arkansas defensive plan, of course, will be to jump around with their linemen and linebackers, attempting to shoot the gap and force the fumbles that will break up the continuity of the Texas running offense. Texas has not passed yet. They've stayed on the ground. And there is Worcester. Worcester going across his own 25. Let's see where his forward progress was marked. It uh, should be enough for the first down. It is. Texas, first and 10. There's the backfield. Street 16, Bertelson 35, Coy 24, Worcester 30. The ball is on the 30 now. Inspired to the far side, number 88. And the Arkansas defense fired up. Immediately in on the play, Bruce James, the defensive end, uh, number 85, in on Worcester, the fullback. And the play is stopped after a yard gain, so it'll be second down to nine for the Longhorns. Last year, Texas won 39 to 29, and it was the only defeat handed to Arkansas. There's some more Texas might on the artificial turf going across the 35. Was Steve Worcester the fullback again, and he gets up to the 36, a five-yard gain, third and four. And the pattern that Arkansas is using is to jump a linebacker in an upright position on the Texas tight end. Texas is sending the end downfield and then blocking the stand-up man with the lead halfback, who's been doing a good job in the last few plays. Texas with the number two scoring offense, averaging 44 points a game, third and four. Coy trying to get outside, and the four yards, did he? The officials looking to the far sideline, the head, the head linesman and his crew, as Dennis Berner, the safety man, and the cornerback, Jerry Moore, make the tackle at the 43-yard line. The balance of the attack, of course, is that tremendous inside fake to Wooster. When he's coming over the ball all the time, you do freeze the middle. Oh, he got seven yards. Another first down for Texas. And there's one of the captains, Ted Coy, carrying Bruce James, 85-64, Cliff Powell. Come in to battle him down at the 45. It'll be second down and eight. Arkansas is in the lead, seven to nothing. And Arkansas is putting single coverage on Cotton Spire. Texas should be able to throw to him if and when they want to go to their passing attack. Second and eight. And Jimmy Street, the leader down on the field for Texas, is stopped by number 61, Dick Bumpus of Fort Smith. Let's watch Powell, the middle linebacker for Texas, moving to the outside. That's Coy going in to make the block. Powell comes back, moving away from Coy to make the tackle on Street. 32 yards rushing and nine plays for Texas. Third and two at the Arkansas, 49. And there you have Worcester. Appearing to get the first down. His forward progress stopped at about the 46. He only needed two yards on the play. Powell and Jury Moore, number 18, on the tackle. Third first down for Texas in this drive. You just joined us when they took the opening kickoff on the second play. They fumbled. Arkansas recovered. They went 22 yards in five plays to take a 7 to nothing lead. Now with 9 minutes, 53 seconds left in the first quarter, Jimmy Street, the Texas quarterback. First and 10. Rick Kersey of Conway, Arkansas, make the stop at about the 44. There's a gain of two, so it'll be second down and eight. Roger Harnish, a sophomore, left tackle, also in on the play. Fire number 88 at the top of your screen. A wishbone tee behind Street on second and eight. Here's the first Texas pass, Cotton Spire, and Arkansas. Terry Stewart, number 24, intercepts. A fumble recovery, and now an interception on the very first Longhorn pass. Let's take a land. Uh, you can see Spire hesitating a little bit and then turning it on on the fly pattern. 
great defensive play by Terry Stewart to make the interception. And the ball is at the eight yard line, but of Arkansas. And Arkansas read the play perfectly. It was the first pass as you called, Chris, but they had double coverage expecting it. Reese is in the lineup, 25. Dykus is in the slot from the eight. First down, Arkansas. <laughs> The man who scored the touchdown, Bill Burnett, carried on the play. Scott Henderson makes the tackle at about the 11-yard line, where it'll be second and seven. Let's watch the interception again. Cotton Spire is the flanker, split in for Texas, down the field, and then the hold up a little bit where he might hook or run a sideline. But then he turns on that speed. Stewart did not take the fake. He's back there in great shape, as is Bobby Field, and double coverage on Spire with the interception. Back live, second and seven from the 11. And Bill Burnett. And uh, you saw number 70, Ronnie Hammers, help block forward for Bill Burnett. And the carry is out. Let's call it the 14-yard line, a gain of three. It's third down and four. But those are the statistics on Bill Montgomery. 52% completion, forward passes. Montgomery has had only five intercepted. Third and four. And throwing a beautiful block was Jerry Dussey, allowing Montgomery, who was trapped, to get more yardage. And finally, the Texas tackle by Bill Zappalak. Let's watch it again, dual isolation, slow motion. Dykus is on the right. It's a sprint out pass. Montgomery setting up, ready to throw. Here's Dykus breaking to the outside. He is covered. The Texas rush is a little bit too deep. There comes the Texas rush, but Montgomery takes it into the big gap. Fine change of pace and converts to a first down. From the 22 of Arkansas. And Montgomery really crossing up the Texas defense. Texas defense, number four in the country against scoring. Number three in total defense, Carl White, number 70, made the stop. And as you see, Arkansas has crossed its own 35-yard line. They're out to the 36. That was a 14-yard gain. Another Arkansas first down. Dykus and Reese to the far side in the slot formation. Burnett, 190 pounder, and only a junior, a great player, with the first marker on the field. There has been an infraction. That's the referee, Carl Landis. illegal shift on the part of the Arkansas offense. So that brings the ball back to the 31, where it'll be first down and 15. The Razorbacks are in the lead, 7 to nothing. We have 6 minutes, 57 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Number 20, Dykus is a lone split end to the far side of the field. Reese is opposite. Bruce Maxwell. The stand-up draw play by Arkansas. It's been their best average gain per try during the season. Comes off the pass fake, hits quickly, and has averaged 6.8 yards per try for them. The ball at the 33 now, gain of two. It's going to be second down and 13 for the Razorbacks. This time, Chris, we should watch the position of the Texas linebackers to see who will be covering on the Arkansas inside backs, Maxwell and Burnett. Here's the team that averages 27 passes per game. Second down and 13. And the fullback, Bruce Maxwell, the Texas defense now. More cohesive unit making the stop. Let's see where the referee puts it down. Puts it down at just about the line of scrimmage, so it'll be third down and 13 as David Arledge and Greg Fletz make the stop. Recent series results, look at them. The 65 game, Arkansas winning it, as Texas was number one that year, just as they are here in 1969. Third and 13. Montgomery, the Tuck Dykus, 
And Chuck Dykus is at the Texas 45. First down, the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks on the drive have started at their own eight. They have now reached the Texas 45. Dykus catching his 32nd pass of the year. Montgomery now has thrown four times. He has completed two for 42 yards. Arkansas leading 7 to nothing. Here's the man that caught the pass coming to the near side. Dykus, Reese is opposite. Brennan Maxwell, the setbacks behind Montgomery. This is number 77. And number 70 is Carl White for the Longhorn defense. And there's a loss on the play. Back to the Arkansas 49. There's a loss of six at second down and 16. Arkansas. Remarkable poise by Montgomery again. He was rushed very hard. He pulled the ball down, made a couple of moves, and almost shipped off the great rush as he did previously to pick up the first down. American Rodney Brand over the ball now, ready to snap it to his quarterback, Bill Montgomery, second and 16 from their own 49. Now this ball! And coming back to aid at a very opportune time was Chuck Dykus, number 20, who recovered the Montgomery fumble. Let's watch it again, dual isolation. Montgomery swinging out. Dykus is on the radio screen, going downfield, planting and coming out of the sideline pattern. He's well covered. You can see the Texas linebacker Campbell has dropped off in front of him. Montgomery decides to run with the ball. He's hit. The ball is fumbled, and it's almost like a button hook pass as Dykus comes back to recover the fumble. And it was a forward fumble, helping the Arkansas cause. It's third down and seven now for the Razorbacks from the Texas 42. Causing that fumble was Carl White of Texas. Montgomery. Breaks away. Throwing the cross field to Dykus at the 30. He is to the 26 of Texas, and it's a first down for Arkansas. Fred Steinmark stops number 20. Chuck Dykus wearing the shoes that are specially built for the AstroTurf. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Montgomery dropping back. Dykus on the right of the screen. Montgomery appears to have good protection. Dykus is hit here. Montgomery's looking for him. Montgomery is hit, shakes off. Dykus is knocked down. Montgomery is still rushed. Dykus is on the ground, as you can see, around the turf. And there comes the throw to him. Montgomery had great moves to get open, and Dykus was open. He found him and hit him. Back live from the 26th of Texas, first down, Arkansas. He's all alone. Touchdown, Chuck Dykus. is down, a penalty flag. On the play, no touchdown. Dykus had beaten his man. That's an understatement, Chris. <laughs> All right. Interference called against the offensive team. And that is a bad break for Arkansas. Let's see it again, bud. Let's watch it again. Dykus was a wide receiver. He's breaking straight through on what we call the post pattern. The Texas safety man had moved up, and he's wide open. Montgomery makes, him again, a perfect throw. And it was six points, but the 15-yard penalty nullified the Arkansas touchdown. Now it's first and 25 for the Razorbacks. The ball is at the Texas 41. Arkansas leading 7-0 with 3 minutes, 6 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Reese to the far side. Dykus is out. And Montgomery is rushed. David Arley was one of them, number 89. Number 77, Villatessis. And the loss is back to the Arkansas 36. What a remarkable job he did of adjusting back there, Chris. He is really tough to get down. Now it'll be second down and uh, about 48. How's that for a long yardage situation? And well, that's coming off what was a touchdown for you also. A little yes. bit discouraging. Yes. 
The Arkansas offense, number nine scoring, averaging 35 points a game. They have rare offensive balance. Dykes to the far side, but it's Maxwell, recently uh, recovered from an injury. That was stopped on the play by Greg Pletz, number 31. With two minutes and four seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Arkansas in the lead. We have a third down and 42. Arkansas has had the ball the last seven minutes. And that was their game plan. They certainly executed well on that possession. And here's the kick by Gary Stockdale. And it's taken by Cotton Spire. Spire worms his way out to the 30-yard line. And so after a long possession by Arkansas, Texas will take over following a 45-yard punt. ABC and the NCAA combined to celebrate the centennial year of college football. With time out to score Arkansas 7, Texas nothing. A 39-degree afternoon, the ceiling, the fog, the clouds are becoming very, very low now. Probably only about four or 500 feet, and perhaps you can see it between our ABC color cameras and the scoreboard, which indicates Arkansas is in the lead 7 to nothing. Texas has the ball for the third time, but the first two times they had it, they lost it on a fumble, then an interception. Now from the 30, Jimmy Street. Here's the Steve Worcester, the fullback. At that time, Chris, uh, Texas went on a very quick snap before Arkansas could jump the defense. They were up the line, set, snap, and that gives them a chance to read the defense perfectly. In fact, but they uh, run their plays, they, their track record is uh, much more rapidly than Arkansas. The Longhorns in white. That's Squire coming to the bottom of your screen. Split away on a second and two from the 38. Worcester again to the 41, a three-yard gain, and uh, it appears he made the first down. Yes, it is. Bruce James on the tackle, number 85, in the red jersey. Fourth first down for Texas. The deepest penetration they uh, have made thus far is to the Arkansas 44, from where Jimmy Street tried a long pass to Spire. It was intercepted by Stewart. The Texas fan, you'll see them at halftime. is Mike Buschetti, a junior, 72, Rick Kersey. In on street, and let's see where the forward progress is marked now. It's at the 42. A gain of one, so it's going to be second down and nine, bud. And that's the fourth, fourth counter play that Texas has tried. None of them have gone. It appears that their straight-ahead attack is better than the misdirection attack up to date. Now number 22 is in the backfield, Billy Dale. Second down. Worcester, carrying up to about the 45. Lynn Garner and Dick Bumpus on the tackle. And the ball is up to the 45, a gain of three. So it's third down and six. And now here at the stadium, public address system announcer has just introduced President Nixon to the standing room only crowd. So we have the end of the first quarter and the score is Arkansas seven. Texas, nothing. President Nixon here in Fayetteville, Arkansas at Razorback Stadium. Now the beginning of the second quarter with Arkansas in the lead to third and six for Texas at their own 45. And Worcester gets a yard and the fired up Arkansas defense led by Dick Bumpus. Also in 59, Mike Buschetti, bud. And the first quarter statistics, offensive plays about even, but Arkansas ahead. Uh, Arkansas has a total of 74 yards against a total of 52 for Texas. The errors, of course, are the key things. Texas with one interception and one fumble. An error that doesn't show for Arkansas was a 15-yard penalty, which prevented a touchdown. Guterman Singo kicking. Gets one high on fourth down and five. And the fair catch is called for by number 18, that is Jerry Moore of Benton, Arkansas, following a 36-yard punt. But that's only the second punt of the ball game, won by Arkansas, and now won by Texas. So the Razorbacks, who lead 7-0, get the ball at their own 18, first and 10. So 
Bill Montgomery, number 10, talking to his head coach, Frank Royals, now in the huddle, giving the signal. Another statistic, Chris, of the first quarter, Arkansas's game plan of possession worked. They had the middle of eight minutes and 20 seconds. Reese to the near side. In the slot, Dykus. Here's the pitch to Burnett. Maxwell blocking. David Arledge is 89. 86 in on the play for the Texans is Mike Campbell, whose brother, twin brother, Tom Campbell, is the defensive left halfback and whose father is one of Darrell Royal's chief assistants. Now with the ball at the 22, following a four-yard game, second and six for Arkansas. Reese and Dykus to the far side. Bill Burnett. Burnett's the man that scored the touchdown for the Razorbacks. And as we look at Bill Montgomery. And he's looking at the sidelines to get a signal pass run. Uh-huh. I would guess this time, Chris, it would be some sort of pass. Bill Montgomery, a junior from Carrollton, Texas, going against the Longhorns today. Because now it's a third down and three at the 25 of Arkansas. Dykus and Reese. Bruce Maxwell that tries for the first down on the, on the turf. Also joined by Carl White on the tackle. And uh, their advance appears to not be sufficient, stopping at the 27, so it's fourth down and one. He just joined us. Arkansas is leading 7-0 as they recovered a Texas fumble, then went 22 yards in five plays. Stockdale, who's averaged 38 yards a kick, now into about a five-mile-an-hour wind. Into the east, or rather north. And he booms that one. The Cotton Spire wisely calls for a fair catch around his own 37. A 36-yard punt in this, the centennial year of college football. With time out, the score, Arkansas 7, Texas nothing. Razorback Stadium and a greeting to Colonel Sanders. That's a well-known face around the country. Before the game, Frank Royal said they'd stay with their running defense as long as Texas stayed with their running attack, and they'd have two men going for Wooster most of the time. Thus far, it's been successful. Come to the Texas 37, Spire to the far side, first down. And Ted Coy is upended. What a defensive play by Lynn Garner, the middle linebacker. And there is a marker on the turf. Let's see if it was a clipping penalty. Number 64. Doing the uh, guiding down there is Cliff Powell. And here's a big 15-yarder. It is a personal foul, a clip against the offensive unit of Texas. Number one in the country. Now forced back to their own 24. And for Texas, the down remains the same. Arkansas is winning the battle along the line of scrimmage a little, getting penetration. And that makes it very difficult to run the triple option. Steve Worcester, number 30, carrying on the play. But that alert Arkansas defense, Powell, Garner, Buschetti in the middle. Making the stop, Powell is calling defensive signals on the right as we look at coach Darrell Royal, youngest coach ever to hit 100 victories. Now, Spire to the near side of the field. It's a second down and 25. And Spire has it at his own 43. Terry Stewart came in to make the stop, number 24, in the red jersey. Let's watch it again on the isolated camera. Spire starting down the field. It was a sprint out pass. And there's the quick break. He put on a very fast stop pattern, and Street delivered the ball to him with perfect timing. Although it was a large gain, they failed to make the first down as Bertelson leaves the lineup, 35, replaced by Dale, turned to 22. It's a third down and four for Texas at their own 43. Fire left. There he is. And if it's ruled an incompleted pass, it's a break for Texas. 
as Jerry Moore was there quickly covering Spire on the play, bringing up a fourth down. And let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. The theory of the hitch pass that Texas just tried is that Spire has enough speed to have the halfback playing him loose, but Arkansas failed to accept that strategy. They were up tight and were on him as the ball was delivered. Monzingo to kick for Texas. It's high, floating down, hard to feel. So Jerry Moore, number 18, catches it following a 37-yard journey. And now Arkansas will get the ball first and 10 around the 20. This afternoon at 5 Eastern Time, 4 Central, ABC's Wide World of Sports will be in Las Vegas, Nevada for live color coverage of the Sunny Liston, the Otis Martin 12-round bout, preliminary bout featuring the Olympic gold medalist in the heavyweight division, George Foreman. That's Wide World of Sports at 5 Eastern Time today. Now it's Arkansas with the ball. Let's call it their own 20. He's having quite an afternoon, isn't he? Mike Campbell joined by Glenn Halsell on the tackle. Let's watch it again, do an isolation. You'll see a fine inside fake here as Maxwell comes over the ball. Dykus dropping back to pick up the screen. Montgomery throwing to him. Great follow through. He looks like a pitcher. The blocking forms for Dykus. And he does a good job of running for daylight downfield. For Dykus' third catch. That one for 15 yards. And Bruce Maxwell comes out of the backfield and moves upfield where Bill Zapolak trips him up. Forward progress stopped at the 43-yard line. A beautiful gain of eight yards, so it'll be second down and two. That's the stand-up draw that we mentioned earlier. Texas stopped it for a yard and a half game the first time, but it's been the biggest average per try running play for Arkansas this season. You see 25 and 20 going to the far right, Dykus and Reese on second and two. Maxwell and Burnett set behind Boston. First down, Arkansas. And Burnett. Stopped by Danny Lester. But not before they had reached the Texas 41. So that's the deepest penetration that Arkansas has made on their own. Of course, they recovered a fumble on the very first series and then went in to, uh, to score the touchdown. And Texas taking time out to try to regroup defensively. Texas is number nine in the country against, uh, pardon me, number two in the country against scoring, and they believe their defense can hold tough. Thanks, bud. Each Saturday on ABC, college football in its centennial year with timeout. The score, Arkansas seven, Texas nothing. On the left, that is Bobby Speck of Texas Tech, the centennial queen of football. Happy girl here today. And Becky Tricky, her chaperone. Right now it's Arkansas at the Texas 41. First down. Intended for Dykus at number 28, Fred Steinmark of Denver, Colorado, nearly at an interception. And once again, Montgomery making an absolutely fantastic move to avoid the rush. Incidentally, that rush was put on by Mike Campbell. Thus far now, Arkansas with 122 total yards in the game. Texas with 73. Arkansas leading 7-0 with 9 minutes and 44 seconds left in the first half. Band music at halftime. We'll be having a chat with President Nixon also. Bruce Maxwell on a second and ten play from the 41. Carl White helping to make the tackle. Joined by Scott Henderson. And he is stopped at the 37. So it's going to be a third down and six. Set away from the line and the backfield, Dykus and Reese. Pat Morris is split a bit. He's the tight end of the near side. And 
busting through was first year man Carl White of McKinney, Texas, number 70. Great defensive job, forcing uh, the Razorbacks back to the 47 of Texas. A 10 yard loss, fourth down and 16, but the Flyers was practically within field goal range. That loss took away the field goal opportunity. Got the Flyers gone deep as Kerry Stockdale. There's Spire, fourth and 16. He'll be kicking the ball from about his own 45. End over end, Spire says, fair catch. Fair catch, let's say the 18-yard line, 29-yard punt. Tomorrow on College Football 1969, you'll be able to see many of the outstanding games and most exciting plays of this centennial year of football. So be sure to watch the program beginning at 12 noon. Consult your local listings for time and station in your area. Well, the Longhorns, they are not on the scoreboard. Now they have the ball at their own 18, first and 10, Bertelson to the far side as a flanker. Up the middle, Worcester, number 30. And for the first time, uh, Texas has broken their wishbone tee by putting the halfback out as a wide flanker beyond Spire. Much credit must go to the right tackle, Dick Bumpus, for making that defensive play at about the 24-yard line. So it'll be second down and four. There are the Longhorns, 30 is Worcester. Randy Peschel is the tight end on the near side, number 40. And the option, finally stopped by 64, Cliff Powell is Bertelson, number 35, leading rusher for Texas. Carried the ball, and he has it out to the 27, a gain of three. It's third down and one for Texas. Number one in the nation, undefeated 18 games. Arkansas undefeated in 15 games. Inspired to the far side. You saw the early movement. We'll have to wait and find out what caused it. Or if it was initiated by the folks on the right. What do you think, bud? I think that Arkansas moved first and probably got contact. Okay. And that looks like he's going to go the wrong way, so I called it wrong. <laughs> Still a conference. Let's see. I guess he's going to call it both ways. He calls it procedure. I guess both teams. Oh, you broke when in doubt, Charles. that's not a bad idea. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we replay the down. Still need a yard. Did they get it? Worcester, they called on the fullback. It is close. Yeah. Carefully unfiling. Roger Harnish. And foul 64. It is a first down for Texas. They have the ball now at their own 28. Now the deepest penetration the Longhorns have made has been to the Arkansas 44. They've had eight first down snaps and only once have they made over three yards. Six minutes, 58 seconds left in the first half. And that was Worcester, who... Uh, Wanted to move just a little bit faster. But number 50, Winch, sort of impeded his progress. And so did Glenn Garner of Arkansas and Dick Bumpus. Worcester now 13 carries for 48 yards. Arkansas leading 7 to nothing with the ball at the 36. It's a second down and two for Texas. Spire at the bottom of your screen, 88. <laughs> Ted Coy, 64, Cliff Powell again, and 49 was Bobby Field, the monster man. And the pattern of the Texas offense is very typical. They put the double flanker out on first down the last two occasions and then ran away from the Arkansas shift to the flanker, then coming back with the power play. Let's watch Powell here, the middle linebacker again. Strong, 210, he hits for keeps, and he drives Coy back, stood off with him and drove him back. On the first down play from the 41, it was Worcester. And then on the play for Arkansas, you saw him getting up, was number 68, Phillips, and 64, Powell. 
No, with the ball out at the 46 now, that is a five-yard gain. It's second and five with five minutes, 39 seconds left in the first half. Arkansas, seven, Texas, nothing. Spire, split left. And Jim Bertelson, who this year has had a great average after nine games of nearly eight yards per carry, moves the ball forward to the 48. That's a gain of only two, so it's third down and three. So another third down situation for Texas. Methodically gets the first down for the Longhorns. Mike Machete on the tackle. The Arkansas plan, however, still seems to be holding up very well, Chris. The longest gain by rushing by the University of Texas is eight yards. If they can play good field position football and make them come all the way, usually a penalty, a fumble, or some error will stop the offensive team. Well, Texas now is only three yards from its deepest penetration at the Arkansas 47 now. First down, Coy is to the near side. And Worcester isn't that hard hitting down there. Powell, 64, 85, James, 18 is Jerry Moore, and Kersey, 72. Let's take another look at Powell, a great middle linebacker of Arkansas. Here he is stepping up, taking on the hard block, fighting through the block, getting penetration, and knocking down the blockers. And although he didn't get to the ball, he wiped them out so the rest of the people could. After a three-yard gain to the 44, second and seven for Texas. There's Bertelson from Wisconsin coming to the 40-yard line for a gain of four, third down and three. And at this pace, they'll have a hard time making it, Chris, even though they keep possession because the clock shows only 3.40 remaining. Third down and three for Texas at the Arkansas 40. And Ted Coy did not make it. Bringing up a fourth down is Bruce James. 85, you see him getting up there. Joined by Lynn Garner, number 53, and Phillips, number 68. They missed it. By and Darryl about is, two yards, bud. Darrell's faced with a choice. Do we go for it or do we kick? And I believe he's going to go for it with the time remaining on the clock. There's a distance needed, about two yards. 3.07 to go in the first half. Arkansas leading 7 to nothing. Timeout here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The score, the Razorback 7, the Longhorns nothing. Yes, the home of the Razorbacks, the Hogs, hosting the Texas Longhorns today. And uh, there is an almost unusual headgear. For Texas now, they're going for it on fourth down and two. It's the wishbone, backfield, Spires, spit to the near side. <laughs> The first down. Cliff Powell and Gardner had to move laterally very fast in order to come in on the play. And there you see it. A gamble paying off, but and you always wonder what to go with on most people go with a straight ahead quick hitting play. That was the counter option, a very delayed play for Texas on fourth and short. Line of scrimmage now is the 36 of Arkansas. And we have uh, Boschetti, Mike Boschetti, making a, a lunging grab at the ball carrier on the play, Bertelson. And as you see, Bertelson moved across the Arkansas 35. A two-yard gain, second down and eight. The halftime music today, an interview with President Nixon. Jimmy Street, number 16. Bertelson, brought down by Stewart, and Bobby Field. The pursuit of the Arkansas defense is magnificent. They're marvelous athletes. They've got great balance. They adjust and move with great speed to the ball. 
Randy Stout, 6'2", 250, is in the lineup for Texas. Replacing Bobby Mitchell, a left guard, on a third down and six now from the 32 of Arkansas. What a defense. Bruce James, 85, 72, Kersey, 49, Bobby Field. Today's game is the final regular season telecast of major college football this centennial year. Next Saturday, you'll see the Liberty Bowl or one of four college division regional championships. At this time, the National Collegiate Athletic Association wishes to express its deep appreciation to the American Broadcasting Company for the exceptional presentation of college football during 1969. ABC's highly skilled staff has very successfully captured the color, excitement, and fierce competition of the college game. The NCAA is grateful, too, to its outstanding list of sponsors and to you millions of spectators who have shown your great support of intercollegiate football in campus stadiums across the country. With plenty of bowl action during the holidays ahead, the NCAA hopes your vacation spirit will be made brighter by college football, the All-American game for all Americans. This a message from Executive Director of the NCAA, Walter Byers, and we're happy to accept it and read it. Thank you very much. Texas now with 102 net yards rushing. From 32 rushes averaging only three yards per try, which is below their first nine game average. Well, here's a fourth down now. At the 31, fourth down and five, and the second time that they've had to go for it. Three receivers out, and... That was Dennis Burner, number 36, who knocked it down on a pass intended for Bertelson. And listen to these Razorback fans. And we must give credit to Cliff Powell, that linebacker, who rushed Jimmy Street, causing him to be quite inaccurate with the pass. Texas just had the ball for seven minutes. Now Arkansas at the 31. Montgomery, the quarterback. They lead seven to nothing. Burnett, who scored the touchdown, gets nearly five yards to the 36. A Tessis on the tackle. Let's take a look at the slow motion here. Powell rushing. Here he is. Street has barely got the ball back as Powell came through absolutely clean. Street was able to get rid of the ball, but... The throw was inaccurate with that much of a rush. Powell having a great day from his middle linebacker spot. Arkansas averaging about 35 points a game. They have a second and six now for own 36. He just tucks it in that midsection butt and goes. Durnett. And uh, Frank Royal's thinking if we make the first down, we can run the clock out, go to the dressing room with a seven-point lead at halftime. That's a three-yard gain, so it's third down and three now with 40 seconds and the clock running left in the first half hope you're enjoying the game johnny reese to the far side number 25 dykus is in the slot number 20. and bill burnett proves that frank broyles and brett wilkinson think alike Ball is just across the 40 to the 41. A measurement now with 13 seconds remaining in that first half. Missed it by about the length of the football. And uh, the Razorback fans want their fellows to go for it. I don't think at this moment no. that's a very good idea, Chris. No. They want this victory today. Arkansas ranked number two in the Associated Press polls, while in the UP polls, Penn State undefeated, ranked second. Arkansas third. Gary Stockdale has his punt block. And covering it for Texas, number 80, Bill Zapalak. And 
Scott Henderson blocked the punt. And that action ended the exciting first half here at Razorback Stadium. And let's see that blocked again. Let's watch it again. A great rush here. Up the middle. Blocked perfectly. And at this point, Texas uh, had an opportunity perhaps to scoop it up and to run with it as the ball bounces. But not knowing that the clock was quite as close to being out, they downed the ball and the clock ran out. There's a great halftime of entertainment coming up. The score here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The Razorback 7. The Longhorns, nothing. halftime here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and first to perform is the University of Texas Longhorn Band, and they have chosen as their theme today, with Christmas only 19 days away, the music of Christmas. It reminds us that the weather is almost Christmas weather here, the temperature in the 30s and a mist coming down, it could drop a few degrees and we'd almost have snow. The first Noel, angels we have heard on high, and here we come at caroling, the Longhorn Band, under the direction of Dr. Vincent Danino.
watching and listening to the University of Texas Longhorn Band here at halftime. The game between Texas and Arkansas with Arkansas leading Texas 7-0. who is in attendance here today watching this classic battle between Texas and Arkansas. And the president will be talking with Chris Schenkel in just a moment in our ABC telecast booth here at Razorback Stadium. And next, spell out on the field by the Longhorn Band. of the United States, Richard Nixon. Well, Mr. President, uh, Bud and I are so pleased that uh, you came up into our office to pay us a visit at halftime. Of course, it's a little warmer up here than it is down the stands. But I must say, I've never seen a football game where there's more excitement in the air than there is today. Uh, this whole state is, is just alive. I can feel it. Uh, we stopped at an airport uh, about an hour away by a car and everybody there it's all they're talking about this game and of course with their uh, nickname the Razorbacks and the calling of the hogs it's the most unusual setting for this game I've never heard a yell like that before and I can I'm sitting incidentally in a very interesting spot I have four Texas congressmen sitting back of me and two senators from Arkansas and a congressman and believe me there's a lot of rivalry here in the stands you know you talk about the uh, pep rallies Mr. President uh, in Austin the night before the team flew here at the stadium, their pep, pep rally for the Longhorns drew 28,000 fans, most of them students, and that's most heartwarming. Oh, that's heartwarming. Well, uh, looking at this game, it is for the ranking of number one, incidentally. I say it is for that, having in mind the fact that 10 states can give me a lot of flack this week for coming down here to... You get any wires? Yes, at, but Penn State is the team that will have the longest undefeated streak for the year. And you, you've covered them, and I know they're a great team. Maybe we ought to have a super college bowl after this, but, uh, but whatever the case might be, looking at these two teams today, uh, either one is going to be number one and by the vote of the writers. But what is more important is the tremendous spirit that they generate. It's good for people to be for somebody, to be for a team. And uh, you can learn a lot uh, from losing as well as winning. I've had a little experience in that. Well, Mr. President, with uh, the favored team, Texas, down 7 to nothing here at halftime. Now, that's true. The first half of your career, you were down, but, boy, you came back a winner. Well, I was down more than 7 to nothing, I would say. I... <laughs> well, I know it was, sort of, it was sort of a fourth quarter finish, you know, and a, and a pass uh, perhaps in the last 30 seconds by uh, to win. But uh, that's what counts. Well, I'm one of many of the millions that are glad you won. Now, um, you've watched football for years, and I 
I know you watch it from an analytical standpoint, whether it be on television or in person. Could you uh, just predict maybe what might uh, transpire in the second half? Well, let me say first, the reason I watch it is that I sat on the bench when I was in college, and you learn a lot from the coach when you sit on the bench. As I look at this game in the first half, I think that Texas has enormous power that is really not unleashed yet. Uh, and that in the second half, uh, they are likely to be much better offensively. Uh, however, they're not going to run over Arkansas. They can't do it by just going at three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, the old Woody Hayes formula, not the Woody Hayes formula this year. I think they're going to have to throw more. They have an excellent passer. They're going to have to throw to open up the Arkansas defense. I think under those circumstances, they're likely to score once or twice. But also, I would suggest that Arkansas looks better offensively than I had realized. They could score in this second half. Uh, they have a, a fine passer. I don't think I've seen a cooler passer than Montgomery. He's really cool under very great pressure. And Texas has got a great pass rush. But Montgomery is cool. He, he uh, gets out there and goes off. And I, I'd rather say that I expect both teams to score in the second half. The question is whether Texas's superior manpower, and I mean probably a stronger bench, may win in the last quarter. That's the way I see it. Well, Mr. Uh, President, if Bud Wilkinson, our analyst, ever falters, uh, we at ABC may call on you to do our commentary. Excellent. I'm not thinking, Chris, of what I'm going to do when I finish my present job, but there's nothing I'd like better than to have Bud's job right with you. Well, I like football. This is the first game I've seen this year in college football, and I'm glad it's the greatest of the year. Well, you paid all of us uh, a great deal of honor by coming to this, uh, the number one game of the year in the centennial year, and enjoy the second half. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And now the Razorback Band, the marching Razorbacks from the University of Arkansas, performing here at halftime. Richard Worthington, now in his 14th year as director of bands at the University of Arkansas. And the band now performing on the... Astro Turf here at Razorback Stadium. The music of Swanee. Let's listen. precision drilling and the music is witchcraft. Thomas Thompson. coming out of their dressing room, trailing here at halftime, seven to nothing to an inspired group of Razorbacks. Incidentally, if you enjoyed the remarks of the president who joined us here today, he will be making a rather unprecedented trip to the winning dressing room here this afternoon to award a trophy to the winning team and coach. So we hope you'll be with us for that. Razorbacks 
the band from the University of Arkansas. And they'll be leaving the field here playing the fight song. Listen to those Razorback fans. Time and music are over, and coming up next, the second half of football. And the score here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Arkansas 7, Texas nothing. Both teams are coming back out onto the field here, as you can see them right now on the other side, the Longhorns of Texas. The Razorbacks are already out. The score is 7 to nothing at halftime, and the fireworks started rather early is on the second play from scrimmage. Texas fumble. Now, here is the play that set up the touchdown. Here is Reese. Now, you watch. The rule states specifically that both feet must be inbound after the reception is made. You see if they are. Now, what looked like one foot was there, but perhaps not the second one. Then, subsequently, Burnett went in to score the touchdown, his 120, 120th point of the year. And that was really all of the scoring. There was another touchdown that was nullified by Beverly, or else uh, Arkansas might have been two touchdowns up. But as you know, the Hugh Rooters from Texas, Texas has been behind once this year. That was to Oklahoma. They were down two and came roaring back and won that one. So that should give heart to the Longhorn fans. But right now, we're getting ready to play football. Back here in the telecasting booth, high above Razorback Stadium. Temperature still around 39 degrees. Weather forecast about the same as it's been. Low clouds hanging in the valleys and over the ridges here, but the field in perfect condition. As we now will have Arkansas kicking with the wind to the back to the Texas Longhorns. Cotton Spire number 88 has gone deep along with the youngster Jim Bertelson. And it will be Bill McClaire kicking to these fellows. There's Spire 88 and loosening up number 35, Bertelson. Arkansas is in the lead, seven to nothing. And there, giving a little added fire to the Arkansas kicking team. This game goes to the Cotton Bowl. The team that finishes on the short end of the score will go to the Sugar Bowl. And the second half, when the ball is touched, will be underway. But in this case, it went out of bounds on the kickoff, which means a five-yard penalty and a re-kick. I believe is. Let's take a look at the statistics of the first half. Offensive plays, Texas having run more plays, but the interesting statistic, total yards, 122 for Texas, 122 for Arkansas. You can't have it much closer than that. Interceptions and fumbles, Texas has had two bad errors. Arkansas, no turnovers. Time of possession, Texas had the ball 15 minutes and 40 seconds against 14-20, so that's practically even also. Texas now to get this second kick. Incidentally, Texas, Texas, 19 games ago, failed to score in the first half against Texas Tech. That was the last until now. Bertelson watching it again. And it is out at the two. So back it comes. And instead of the 35, but it will be kicked from the 30. And we've had uh, two plays, Chris, uh, without any ticks on the clock because the ball is not in play until it's caught. The coldest weather that uh, the Texans played in, you think about temperature at 39 degrees here, well last year in the Cotton Bowl it was 22, but it's mainly the Arkansas defense here on the field today. On the two previous uh, kickoffs, McClard drove the ball out of the end zone with the two penalties. It's possible that Texas can get a run back moving and get it outside of their own 20 which would be of course very advantageous field position for them last year texas and arkansas shared the southwest conference this is for the championship of the conference right here today gets a good kick mcclair bringing it down at the nine that is fire 15 20 25 30 coming outside gets away again Arkansas has come up with it. One of the boys there was number 28, Price. And look at those Razorback fans.
fans. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Here's Spire with the ball. He's getting hemmed in. He moves to the outside, breaks the tackle, then tries to cut back inside, and he's hit hard from the blind side. The ball slipped loose. Arkansas takes over. Now let's check the Texas defensive poise as Arkansas has the ball at the Texas 37. First down, Montgomery goes right to the air. Dykus, number 20, was the receiver. He's the top catcher today for the Razorbacks. Danny Lester was covering them on the far side of the field. And on the third kick, if you just joined us, Cotton Spire had a good run back, gave it about the fifth effort, and then fumbled the ball. And uh, knocking the ball loose for Arkansas was Steve Birdwell with Ronnie Price recovering it. So here we are, second down and 10 for Arkansas, the Texas 37. And the fullback, Maxwell, perhaps a yard. And on the play, we have uh, number 70 for Texas, that is White, and Glenn Halsell, number 67, and Greg Pletz, number 31. There's the offensive line, which has done a fine job today for Arkansas. Haven't seen too much of number 88, the tight end, Pat Morrison, but he's he been will, blocking. Uh, he will later in the game. He's been blocking, and uh, but now it's a third down and 10. And at the 42-yard line, David Arledge gets in on the quarterback. That's a loss of five yards, so it'll be fourth down and 15 as Bill of Tessis pinched in from his left defensive end position. And uh, we have a punting situation. Kerry Stockdale will punt, kicking from about midfield. The fine punt. Number 74 rushed down there hoping to cover it before it went across the uh, goal line was Dossie. So it's out of the 20s. We have a timeout here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The score, Arkansas 7, Texas nothing. And following a touchback, Texas has the ball first and 10 at their own 20. And we'll see if Texas is going to loosen up their offense or they're going to stay right with the straight ahead hard driving attack. And Spire to the far side. And it's Jim Bertelson keeping it on the ground for four yards. And Roger Harnish makes the tackle for Arkansas, bringing up actually a three-yard gain to the 23. Second down and seven. Arkansas leads Texas seven to nothing with about 13 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Spire at the top of your screen. Wishbone T behind Jimmy Street. Seventy-two, Rick Hersey on the option by the quarterback and Mike Machetti making the stop on street at the 28th, five-yard gain. It's third down and two. Great execution, fine faking by Wooster. The Arkansas pursuit recovers so well that they're holding Texas to short games. Spire again split to the right. They need two yards. And uh, they called on Ted Coy, one of the captains, a senior from Belleville, Texas, from the Coy family. His dad, his brother Ernie, played for the Longhorns. And that was the power play. The first two plays uh, came off the option, the defense, when they're standing high looking for the option. It's very tough to be done, and they're low enough to stop the Texas power drive off tackle. Same formation. First both teams to the right is fire. On the 32. loses the ball. Great pursuit to the Arkansas men up front. Bruce James in hard on the play 85 and Powell 64 at the 35 yard line, second and seven. The measure of whether a team is ready to play is how many men are around the ball when the tackle is made. Arkansas has almost the whole team there unless they have one half back downfield with Spire if he's running a deep pattern. Bertelson. Way outside, Spire has a flanker. And that's Coy. 
Lynn Garner, one of the first men in, along with 49, Bobby Field, and Mike Boschetti, 59. Garner is 53. So the ball is right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven. And but they keep rushing the football or trying to. I think we'll see them uh, open it up the next time, Chris. As you come out of the dressing room to start a second half, you always want to go with what you, you've used well during the rest of the season. Flanker right, split in left. comes up with its third fumble recovery. Number 24 is Terry Stewart. Let's watch it again on the isolated camera. This is Burke. Uh, Spire breaking behind the linebacker, hooking, making a marvelous catch, and then losing the ball. It's kicked around by everyone, and Arkansas comes up with it. The fourth turnover by Texas. Stewart now has an interception and a fumble recovery. Cliff Powell. Hit the ball carrier on the play. Arkansas at their own 47-yard line. First down. German Bill Burnett is in Texas territory. Make it a good block for Bruce Maxwell. Let's watch the fumble again in slow motion. Spire driving down the field. A little outside wrinkle to get past the end who's dropped off. And then hooking to the inside. A streak delivers the ball to him. He's hit as he catches the ball, but he makes a fine recovery to keep possession, and there it goes. That Cliff Powell is having quite a game today, bud number 64. It's second and third now for the offensive team at the 46 of Texas. At 86 is Mike Campbell. At midfield, loss of four yards, bringing up third down and seven. The Razorbacks using a little of the Texas option. They've run two successive quarterback option plays. Theirs is just a single option at the end rather than the inside option to the fullback and then the option on the end. There's a look at Bill Montgomery. Getting away. a block by Bruce Maxwell. Bill Montgomery has moved to the Texas 31. Let's watch it again on dual isolation. And this will give you some idea of how the quarterback ought to operate. Dykus is on the right of the screen. Montgomery is set now. Dykus, Whirly, Montgomery. Now the rush is on as Dykus goes to the ground. No one to throw to. Montgomery starts to run. But watch this nifty fake here. He faked the throw and ran right by the Texas end. Got off the hook. First down, Arkansas. At the 31 of Texas, Maxwell, who threw the block. Carl White, number 70, shaken up on that last play. Well, we'll hope Carl White is okay. He's the boy from McKinney, Texas, who has played a fine game. Time out here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The score of the Razorbacks, seven, the Longhorns, nothing. It appears that White, fine young Texas uh, lineman, injured his left knee, now being assisted to the far sideline, as you see. Second down and eight for Arkansas at the Texas 29. Scott Palmer has come in for White. He wears number 65 on the Texas jersey. Here are the Razorbacks in the lead 7 to nothing, with 9 minutes and 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Montgomery. Dykus. Touchdown. 29 yards. Three yards in five plays. 
The 12th touchdown pass for Bill Montgomery and a cool one to Dykus. Going to the point after now. McClare is up and good. Let's see that play, but again in slow motion. It's a beautiful play. Dykus to the right of your screen, starting downfield. Montgomery dropping back. This time, this is an exclusive, of course, the split screen. Dykus taking a little inside break. Montgomery getting beautiful protection this time. And Dykus cuts to the inside. And Montgomery delivers the ball perfectly on target. Here's a great block. Beautiful block by Reese and Dykus, or Morrison rather, and Dykus walks into the end zone. Great execution, marvelous play. And for All-American, Dykus, his fourth touchdown catch of the year. As we indicated, the 12th thrown by Montgomery, a 29-yard, and now Texas really 0 to 14. Bill McClaird with the wind to his back, with Spire and Bertelson deep for the Longhorns. 9.06 remaining in the third quarter. It is Spire, 10, 15, 20, 25. And you notice how Spire double hugged that ball, returning this kick where he's met by Birdwell of Arkansas and Hope at approximately the 28 yard line. And there's the story of the game, Chris. Arkansas is executing very well, but the four turnovers by Texas have been the difference, giving Arkansas the edge needed for that 14 0 lead. Now it's fire to the far side. The wishbone tee from the 28, first down. Jimmy Street. Sometimes the sideline can be dangerous for Arkansas coaches. Bruce James, 85, and Lynn Garner forcing the play to the near sideline at about the 31-yard line, second and seven. There is uh, the knee of White, who was injured a little earlier, Carl White. Texas now changing their formation with the flank of the near side, split end opposite. Street, Coy blocking. is ruled a completed pass at midfield. It was a marvelous throw. Street was truly rushed. Let's take a look at it again. New formation by Texas. Halfback split on one side, opposite Spire. Watch Spire now. Breaking to the outside. Stewart going back. Street truly hung that one in there. And he did it on the run from a hard rush. First and 10 for the Longhorns. Near midfield. Spire set to the near side. Bertelson, the hard way to the Arkansas 49. Bumpus on the tackle and James, number 85, getting up slowly. And when Texas is in that wishbone tee, Arkansas has 10 men ready to come with the snap of the ball. They're all right on that line of scrimmage. Second down to nine for Texas. They trail 14 to nothing. Going deep, it's floating out there. And another error by the Longhorns, the fifth. Dennis Burner comes up with this one. Take a look at it again on the isolated camera. Here's Fire. It was an inside fake, and in the fake of the hitch. Fire trying to get deep, but Moore going right with him, and Burner coming across to make the interception. The fake of the hitch did not work. And that's his first interception of the year. Timely. With the offensive unit now, led by number 10, quarterback Bill Montgomery, with the ball at the 24-yard line. First down, and with a 14 to nothing lead, 7.52 left in the third quarter. Dykus. Far side. Out the flat there is Dykus. Well, the varied offense of the Razorbacks moving the ball out to the 39. Lester and Campbell on the tackle following about a 14 yard gain. Let's take a look at it again in ABC's exclusive dual isolation. There's Burnett coming over the ball. Pitch pattern this time by Dykus. Burnett throwing beautifully to him. Little screen pattern. Here come the screen men to block. Dykus takes an inside fake, then rolls it to the outside. 
All right, first and ten from their own 38, Arkansas. And Bill Burnett blocked for the quarterback, Montgomery. Blocking backs, there's Burnett. Ten, Montgomery, as Otessis makes the tackle after, let's see, uh, a one-yard gain. We've seen Montgomery uh, Thanksgiving Day and then today, and he's certainly come on strong. Early in the season, Montgomery had a torn rib cartilage. Uh, it didn't keep him from playing, but it was quite painful. Now that he's totally healed, believe me, he's some quarterback. Dykus, who has five catches for 96 yards and a touchdown, is to the near side. Second and nine. And Bruce Maxwell, number 34, the 41, a gain of two. It's third down and seven. A Texas, 77, and Mike Campbell defensively for Texas. and Reese, 20 and 25 to the far side on third and seven from the Arkansas 41. There's Burnett with Maxwell blocking Burnett. It's first down, Razorbacks. Playing the Texas outside areas, Bill Montgomery, coolness. With Maxwell drawing his second important block, Burnett gets to the Texas 41. Earlier in the year, Arkansas had gone with the power sweep. Today, they're going with that option, and they make it look awfully good. Going against a team that is number eight, rushing defense, allowing only 88 yards per game and five touchdowns overall. Texas. Montgomery now for the Texas 41 delay. And the delay calls by Texas changing their defense. Montgomery trying to change the offensive play and taking just a little bit too long to do it. There's the signal. So that brings the ball back to the 46 where it'll be first down and 15 with 523 to go. Third quarter, 14 to nothing. Arkansas, the underdog. Montgomery directing Arkansas to a tie for the Southwest Conference crown last year and a Sugar Bowl win. First and 15, number 10. Burnett. One of the men making contact was Bill Zapalak, number 80, and Scott Henderson, number 61, as Montgomery has completed six of 10 including a 29 touchdown, 29 yard touchdown pass to Chuck Dekas. Five yard gain at his second down and 10, third quarter. Reese all alone to the far side. Dykus opposite, flanker and a slid out. Burnett. Hammers and Dossie blocking forward. And the advance is to the 37. That's a gain of four, third down and six. And the yards are very important now because of the pirates' great field goal ability. He's got a strong leg. He could probably make one from here if he hit it just right. And those two potential uh, receivers to the near side, Dykus and Reese on third and six. a fine defensive play. Both by the defensive secondary covering the receivers is Villatesa 77 and 65 in white. Scott Palmer get Montgomery at the 42. That's a loss of five. So that brings up a fourth down and 11. Arkansas, their field goal kicker is Bill McLeod, who has kicked seven of nine, but too far away in this case. And with a 14 to nothing lead, here comes the McLeod punt. Steinmark in single safety for Texas. It's a touchback. 
So it'll be the Longhorns with the ball at their own 20. Each week throughout the fall, watch ABC for college football, now in its centennial year. With time out to score, Arkansas 14, Texas nothing. Cheer from the Texas Rooters here in Arkansas. An upset in the making. But the nation's number one team, Texas, has the ball at its own 20, first and 10. 14 to nothing, they trail. And Worcester comes out for about four yards. Dick Bumpus on the tackle and Cliff Powell. So it's second and six now for Texas. Four remaining in the third quarter of play. Fire to the near side. And Bertelson out of bounds at about the 31. And let's see if he gained enough for the first down. It appears he did. Yes. Bushetti and Field going lateral on the play. Let's watch it again in slow motion. There's the great fake over the ball. And Wooster, you can see, is being played very hard. The pitch by Street back to Bertelson, who made a fine move, cutting inside and threading his way forward for the first down. Texas now from the 31. And that was Jimmy Street trying to loosen up the tough Arkansas defense. Len Garner on the tackle. The carry is out to the 32, or rather, make up the 37-yard line. After a six-yard gain, it's second and four. About two minutes left in the third quarter. Worcester. And it's... Looks like a first down. And the signal. He's had a cold hamstring. It looks like he pulled it again. So coming in the lineup is number 46, Bobby Callison, a junior from Abilene. There is Worcester. Texas with 206 yards, total offense. Arkansas, 212. Texas has had five errors, however. And the 44. Bobby Callison going to work immediately. Bruce James stopping him. At the 49, a gain of five, second and five, Texas. Spire, the top of your screen. There's Cliff Powell, number 64. On Callison. And thus far, the Arkansas defensive plan has worked perfectly. They've had great field position all afternoon. The best position Texas has had the ball is on their own 37 and the exchange. They've had it most of the time on their own 20. And Arkansas is shutting off the long gainer. But if uh, we felt the Arkansas fans were confident, the Arkansas team is really confident today. From the 49 now, it's third down and five for Texas. And it's completed uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the 43. Enough for a Texas first down as Spire makes the catch. Burner on the tackle. Let's watch it again in isolated camera slow motion. This is against the grain pattern. The quarterback street is rolling to the right of the screen as Spire cuts across very shallow. The street set up, and you can see the Arkansas defensive men started to move to the left of the screen and come back. Street through a strike. It's a time-consuming drive. 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 from the Arkansas 44. Bobby Callison. Substitute fullback to the 42. And Cliff Powell again on the tackle as time expires. The end of the third quarter here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The score, the Razorbacks 14, Texas nothing.
commander in chief who following this game will present a plaque to the winning team and on monday night at 9 p.m abc will carry his live and in color press conference now it's second and nine for texas start of the fourth quarter jimmy street in trouble gets away Street back to throw. Everyone covered. He runs. And when you're coaching, this is what gives you gray hairs. You have a quarterback with individual brilliance break a touchdown play when it should have been a loss. And that's what Montgomery's been doing all afternoon for Arkansas also. Two great quarterbacks, Street and Montgomery. Well, it took him about 13 seconds to go 42 yards. And now they are going for two. And Street. play by Jimmy Street. He has just made eight points for the nation's number one team. And on the play, number 72, Rick Percy, the defensive left tackle for Arkansas, was injured. So it is 14 to 8 here. 80 yards in nine plays, a 42-yard run by Jimmy Street, his fifth touchdown rushing this year. Change. Right. It's time out here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, with a score. Arkansas 14, Texas 8. V like receiving formation, Bill Burnett, Mike Hendren, and Bruce Maxwell on the far side. Following a Texas touchdown and the try for two is successful. It's 14 to 8 Arkansas. This is Happy Feller. Kicking to Arkansas, 14-47, left in the game. Don't go away. That was Burnett, number 33, watching it go across the end line. It's a touchback, and Arkansas will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20. And but third, third quarter statistics, very close game. Texas winning more plays, but the total yards, very interesting. Texas 218, Arkansas 212. The big difference, the turnovers, Texas having made five turnovers, two interceptions, three fumbles, Arkansas none. Time of possession almost even, 22-40 for Texas, 22-20 for Arkansas. And now for Arkansas, that left 14 to nothing, now 14-8, two men to the far side. Dykeson Reese, Montgomery the quarterback from the 20. And Burnett squirts away for perhaps two yards. Tessis hit him first, then Greg Pletz, number 31 of the Texas defense, and actually gained a half a yard, so it's second down, nine and one half. As we look at Montgomery, who checks the signal from his head coach, Frank Broyles, a Georgia Tech product, a native of Decatur, Georgia. Dykus and Reese again to the far side. Morrison out on a pattern. Dykus, tackled by Danny Lester, out at the 41, 21-yard play. ABC exclusive dual highlight isolation again. Montgomery dropping back. Dykus driving down the field. Montgomery setting. Dykus a little outside fake, breaking to the inside. Great pass protection. Fine throw by Montgomery. He hits Dykus right on the letters. First down, Arkansas. Dykus, six catches, 117 yards and a touchdown. First down, Montgomery. Burnett, Maxwell blocking again. This is a key possession for Arkansas. Texas needs to stop them. It takes them quite a while to score the way they move it out. If Arkansas can keep possession and move it, Texas is in trouble. The last march by Texas, 80 yards in nine plays. The big play coming, a 42-yard run for the quarterback for the score, and then Jimmy Street also scored the two-point conversion. 14-8, to eight, and what a call, what a decision by Coach Darrell Royal and his team to go for two at that spot. Bill Montgomery now calling signal from the 44. Whoops. 
with David Arley on the tackle at the 47. Usually you talk about the third and eight, third and ten being the big downs, but this, I guess it's third and six, isn't it, Chris? Or third and four, third and rather. Four, the yeah. real big one. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Arkansas, as you see, they're in their own territory at the 47, and they have a 14 to eight lead with 12.44 left in the game. And here's that third down pass. Down the middle. And it was complete to Dykus. Covering on the play with a marker down now, Richardson. Let's see what the penalty will be back at the line of scrimmage. Earlier, there was a touchdown recall earlier in the game. Montgomery to Dykus as a result of a penalty. And here's a procedure call against the offense. Third and nine. Let's watch it again in slow motion. As Montgomery drops, drops back, watch the marvelous protection by the Arkansas line. He's just standing there all day. And Dykus has now plenty of time to run the pattern, break into the inside, pass the Texas linebackers as Montgomery hits him. Well, in the last 10 years, Texas and Arkansas have won or shared the Southwest Conference crown eight times. They're going after it again today. Third and nine, and at the same spot, he hits Dykus. Campbell on the tackle, and it's the 38th catch by Dykus this year. Let's watch it again on dual isolation. This is what you call threading the needle. Montgomery back. Texas rushing with four men. Dykus breaking to the inside, then breaking downfield again, and then coming back across the field as Montgomery has all day to throw it. And watch that ball zip between the two defenders. Nearly 20 yards and a first down. The play now coming from the Texas 38. Montgomery. And in on the play is number 84, Tom Campbell. John Reese, number 25, of Jonesboro, Arkansas, made the stop. First down. Here it is again. Watch Reese breaking to the outside here. Then turning back to the inside, moving back. And here comes the ball. A very hard pattern to cover. The comeback pass after you've driven downfield fast. Montgomery is now 9 of 13 and 169 yards from the Texas 24. Bill decides to call time to get things a little better organized as the Arkansas Razorbacks have a 14 to 8 lead with 11.40 remaining in the ball game. Now Montgomery will talk to coach Frank Broyles who's won one national championship, six conference crowns, seven bowl appearances. A total of 323 National Collegiate Athletic Association member teams play what is sometimes mistakenly called small college football. The correct name is the college division. Next Saturday, the NCAA and ABC will present to television viewers in the area of their greatest interest. The four college division regional championships of 1969. At the Boardwalk Bowl in Atlantic City, Delaware meets North Carolina Central for the East title. Louisiana Tech takes on East Tennessee State in the Grantland Rice Bowl in Baton Rouge for the Mideast title. And then Drake meets Arkansas State in the Midwest Pecan Bowl in Arlington, Texas. The West Championship will be a battle of unbeatens in the Camellia Bowl in Sacramento, California, where North Dakota State duels Montana. If your local ABC station is scheduled for an NCAA College Division game next Saturday, tune in for some outstanding college football. And when Arkansas had to move it, Chris, they certainly have. They're down within field goal range now. And it's at the 24. Honor student and a pre-law student, Bill Montgomery from Carrollton, Texas, number 10. As a first and 10 at the Texas 24. Dykus and Reese to this side, the near side. Lofting one to Dykus and a marker is down in the secondary. Texas decided to go with the rush that time. Man-to-man -man coverage against the rush. And the man-to-man -man coverage, Chris, I believe, is going to be an interference call. Yes, either that or holding, it appears now. As the referee, Carl Landis, the umpire, Bruno Schroeder. Stepping off the yardage. 
It's holding against the defensive team. And it's a first down. And let's see where the ball is spotted. Let's watch it again. Here's Dykus on the left of the screen going downfield. And this is Steinmark coming up on man-to-man -man coverage. You didn't want to let him get by. And you can see him holding him as the rush is on Montgomery. But there's no question about that call. First and goal from the nine. Montgomery. He, however, gains three yards on the play. Scott Palmer on the tackle. Now it's second. And goal with the ball at the seventh. Pickup of two with 11-15 remaining in the game. It's Arkansas 14, Texas 8. Texas number one, Arkansas number two, and the AP ball number three, and UP with Penn State second. Nevertheless, the Razorbacks second and goal. rush causing the pass to be short and rushing was number 89 a sophomore from Richardson Texas 511 his name is David Arledge I can see a tenant receiver third down and goal 44,000 here on a gray cold afternoon in Fayetteville Arkansas the foothill of the Ozarks as the Hogs and Steers are battling it out. It's a shootout. Morrison, the tight end, slightly split to the far side. Dykus opposite. And Texas gets an interception. Believe me, that was a... Interception, Danny Lester, number 23. And Bud, here we go for more excitement. Let's watch it in dual isolation because this is truly a key play. Dykus on the left, Montgomery rolling to the bottom of the screen. Dykus breaks to the outside. He appears to be open. The pass is just slightly underthrown, and there is the interception by Lester. It prevented the field goal, and Texas has the ball. From the 20, first down. Getting to 10 point. Lynn Garner, the middle linebacker, number 53, really carrying the action outside offensively. And Ted Coy, strong. The halfback got two yards to the 22, second and eight. That's the way the defensive play, though, Chris. Drifted out, drifted out, and delay the decision. Let the pursuit get there. By pursuit, we mean the defensive lineman and linebackers knowing where the ball is and using their speed and reaction to get to it. Worcester now back in at fullback, averaging five yards a carry coming into the game. And there he is. And getting out to the 26 for four. 64 is Cliff Powell of Eudora, Arkansas. Texas now has 200 rushing yards. A little more than 10 minutes remaining in the game. Third down and four. As you see, the ball is at the Texas 26. Ted Coy, flanker outside the split end, Cotton Spire. Complete to Randy Peschel, who gets his first catch of the day, number 40. And for the Longhorns, who started this drive at the 20, they have come out to the 41 on a 15-yard play and a first and 10. Chris, I think you can feel the tension in the stadium. I'm sure that that noise factor makes everyone at home realize. Jimmy Street now, who uh, came up with a eight-point play minutes ago, is five of nine passing down from his own 41. On the end around, this is Fire. He's at the 40 45 midfield into the Arkansas 45. About a 14 yard play. Marvelous block by Bob McKay. Drop him back. Let's take a look at it again. This starts just like the triple option play. There's Fire coming back to split end, and there's a little toss. Great block there. Fine pursuit again by Arkansas to prevent a touchdown run. At the Arkansas 45 now. The fifth play in this drive. First down. Ted Coy. Stop 
by Cliff Powell. Inside the Arkansas 40, 39-yard line, and the 39 hash mark, you should say. So it brings up a second down and four as we look at Worcester number 30 and some of the Longhorn cheerleaders. Bertelson is flanked to the far side, and to the near side, it is fire. And uh, Jimmy Street wanted to talk things over with head coach Daryl Royal. Daryl of Oklahoma fame, who's won 106 games. Right now, at this time out, college football started in 1869. Now each week, it's on ABC television. The score, Arkansas 14, Texas 8. On the clock, eight minutes and 42 seconds of tension remaining here. As the nation's number one team, Texas, is down by six points. They have the ball second and four. They're in white at the Arkansas 39. Bertelson to the far side. With Worcester, Jim Strait, the quarterback, keeps it on the ground. Garner, Bruce James, tackling. An unusual formation by Texas with two wide split receivers. Arkansas refused to go for the fake of the formation, stayed in tough against the run. They gained less than a yard on that rushing play, so it brings up a third down and still about four. Street looking over the Arkansas defense as it shifts now. Ted Coy. Ted Coy. And Arkansas has recovered another long fumble. Let's watch it again in slow motion. It's the option play. There's a fake to Wooster. Street is hit and tries to lateral as he's going to the ground. The ball was slightly overthrown. Coy can't quite control it. And as he reaches for it, he's hit. The momentum causes the ball to slide away from him, and Arkansas recovers. Gordon McNulty picking up the fourth fumble against Texas from the 42, Arkansas's Burnett. Number 33 stopped in a hurry by number 31, Greg Fletz, and uh, number 65, Palmer. 740 left in the game. Arkansas 14, Texas 8. With the ball at the 42. Second down and 10. Dykus comes to the near side. And uh, he's in the slot between the tackle and Reese, the split end. Burnett for about two. Let's on the tackle for the Longhorns. A little more than a yard gain, so it'll be third down at about nine. Rick Neighbors of Austin is in at safety, replacing Fred Steinmark. There you see six errors by Texas, one by Arkansas. Third down at about nine, and Montgomery. And the Texas defense, led by David Arledge. Number 89, in on the play, 77, Bill Atessis. It's a great series by the Texas defense. Perhaps the momentum will carry over to the offense. Fourth down and 16. Line of scrimmage at the Arkansas 36. Six minutes, 27 seconds. Left in the ball game, and time becoming very important. Gary Stockdale will punt. Spire is deep for the Longhorns. And Stockdale comes through with a fine punt. And a fair catch call for by Spire at the 36. So the Longhorns now have really a job ahead of them. They'll have to move 64 yards in order to get on the scoreboard and into the lead. This afternoon at 5 Eastern and 4 Central, it'll be former world heavyweight champion Sonny Liston going against Otis Martin on ABC's Live World of Sports. Ed Coy from the 36. Maybe a yard. Bruce James. A native of Moss Point, Mississippi. And Terry Don Phillips at the, well, let's call it the 38, so second down and eight. A 
lot of faking on that play. And you could see the men tackling the men that didn't have the ball, which is the clue to the type of defense that Arkansas has been playing all afternoon, going for the men who might have the ball off the three-way Texas option. Ted Coy to the 41. That's a three-yard gain, and it's third down and five. Fire to the near side. Third and five for the Longhorns. About five minutes left in the game. And Worcester did not make the first down. Missed it by two and a half yards. Terry Don Phillips defensively along with Dick Bumpus for the Razorbacks. And time has been called by the Longhorns as they have the ball at the 44 with a fourth down coming up and a little more than two. It's time out. Fayetteville, Arkansas, the score. The Razorbacks 14, the Longhorns 8. In this Southwest Conference battle, 4.47 to go. Arkansas leading 14 to 8. Her face certainly reflecting the team she's rooting for in Texas. As we have now, a most crucial fourth down play again for the Longhorns at their own 43 and a half. And going for broke to Randy Peschel. And Peschel catches the ball. What a toss. Randy Peschel. from the Texas 43 and a half to the Arkansas 13 first down. And that was courage, Chris. Putting the game in the season on that one play and going for the big ball. And the national championship, perhaps, but first and 10 now for the Longhorns with 426 left from the 13 of Arkansas. That is Ted Coy. Brother Ernie preceded him in the Longhorn backfield, and their father, Ernie Sr., was a Longhorn player. Let's As watch it. Go ahead, Slow Bob. motion. This is the power play. You can see the Booster driving in and leading. There goes Bertelson making a great block. Coy going off Bertelson's block, then cutting back to the outside, breaking the tackle, and moving to a first down on the two-yard line. Spire to the near side. First and goal. Feller, who has kicked 42 of 44 extra points. This is a big one. It's up. Good. Texas for the first time with three minutes and 58 seconds left in the game. They have the lead by one. with 358 starting deep with their grinded out attack might have a little more trouble. Happy Feller's kick now. There's Bill Burnett. Letting it go through across the end line for an automatic touchback. And Bud with six errors. It takes the team with a great deal of poise to come back 14 to nothing. And they go ahead 15-14. Takes a great deal of courage to throw the long ball on fourth and four from your own territory. And that call going for two on the first touchdown by Darrell Royal and his quarterback, that to me is one of the real gutty calls I've seen in a long time. Many coaches, Chris, would uh, wait for the second touchdown to go for two. And by going for it on the first snap, I think you changed the pace on them a little bit. 
All right, now Arkansas, they've got to go 80 yards or get within field goal range from the 20. Here's Bill Montgomery. The Dykus. Out to the 25, and you notice Chuck, he tried to get an extra yard there, but he had actually moved the ball up to the spot, 25, where Scott Henderson makes the stop. Montgomery now has thrown 16 times. He's completed 10 for 169 yards, one touchdown to Dykus. Street is 7 of 11 and 120 yards. Second down and five for Arkansas. Montgomery. Intended for number 88, Pat Morrison. Third down and five. Texas wondering, should we go with the rush or should we try to cover? They have been playing the cover most of the time. Four-man rush, seven-man covering. Joe Montgomery looking at Frank Royals, the head coach. Daryl Royal and Frank Royals, two close friends. But how they battle when their teams meet and when the championship is at stake. Third and five. And Dykus with his ninth catch of the afternoon only for a few yards as Glenn Halsell makes the tackle at the 29. A gain of four, so it's fourth down and one, bud. There's no, not much doubt what they'll do here, Chris. They have to go for it. Right here, we'd like to thank our NCAA Television Committee Chairman Forrest Evashevsky and the Larry Klein, Director of NCAA Sports Services, for their assistance throughout this centennial year of college football. It's been a fantastic year. We have a lot of bowl games to go, like the Liberty next week. And, uh, of course, the East-West. And uh, then the Sugar Bowl, Mississippi, to meet the team that comes out on the short end of this score today. Both of them are great teams, Chris. I think everyone shares that view. And then, of course, for a little respite, we hope, Hawaii for the Hula Bowl on January 10th. An unusual call here. Arkansas with fourth and one did not take the timeout. Texas did, trying to decide what defensive pattern they wanted to use on this crucial down. Wow. Well, there's one thing for sure. It isn't necessary to have a stimulant here today because the action has been There you see Bill Montgomery now. Fourth, and when I say one yard, let me point out that it's short one. It uh, actually, but it looks more like two feet. It's about that, and Arkansas less than that. They can go for the safe first down and uh, then have first and ten again, or they might try to go for the big one. I doubt it. It's a high formation. 2.51 left in the game. They trail by one. And Bill Burnett. Let's see where they unpile. First down for the Razorbacks. Scott Palmer and Glenn Halsell on the tackle. Reese, number 25, goes to the far side, 2.37, the clock running remaining. From the 30, Bill Burnett. Bill Burnett catching his first pass today, but he certainly had a great job moving the ball on the AstroTurf. I think we ought to mention again about the great pass protection of Arkansas. When Texas is going with the normal four-man rush, Montgomery is not pressured in any way. Friendly Arkansas, bud. They really uh, are most hospitable here in this scenic country. Great place to visit. Second down and less than a yard. There's a Bill Montgomery first down and a lost shoe. These shoes uh, are different, especially the way they're shot on the soles for this artificial uh, surface, but before the game, Darrell was saying if it rains, well, we will wear our cleats, but if the field stays like it is now, which is quite dry, we'll go with our normal rubber sole shoes. All right, still uh, doing a little work on that shoe as we have a timeout at Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the score is Texas 15, Arkansas 14. 
game to go. 15-14 Texas. By far the lowest scoring total of either team this year. Texas averaging 44 per game. Arkansas averaging 35. And now Arkansas trailing by one with a first and ten at their own 42. Bruce Maxwell, the fullback, and a sure tackle by number 61, Scott Henderson of Dallas. And once again, the draw play, Chris, but Texas was waiting for it. Second down and nine. The Razorbacks sending Reese to the far side, Dykus to the near side, second and nine. And Burnett catches his second pass of the afternoon, his eighth pass of the year, with Henderson, 61, forcing him out of bounds. And the Razorbacks are in Texas territory with a first down at the Texas 46, a minute and 51 to go. Montgomery has thrown 20 times, completing 13, 65% today with a touchdown pass to Dykus. The other touchdown for Arkansas was scored by Burnett in the first period. For Texas, it was Street. And uh, Arkansas now. Complete to Burnett. And once again, that delayed pattern out of the backfield is getting Burnett open outside of the Texas defensive end. And that gain was to the 39, a gain of seven, second down and three, a minute 31 remaining in the game. Arkansas is trailing by one point. Dykus and Reese to the far side. Montgomery again wants to talk to the coach. He took a look at the defense, Chris. Uh, Texas was up ready to give it the rush. I don't think he wanted to take a chance on checking signals with the crowd noise. Uh, Arkansas unofficially has one more timeout remaining. Well, since Frank Broyles of Arkansas and Darrell Royal have coached in the Southwest Conference, each has won 88 games, bud, and they go after each other that way on the golf course because in the last three years, either Daryl Royal or Frank Broyles have won the Coaches Invitational Tournament at Bella Vista here in Arkansas, which is quite an annual affair. And here today, it's 15-14, and we hope everyone has enjoyed the game. We certainly enjoyed working with Athletic Director and Head Coach Daryl Royal. Sports Information Director Jones Ramsey, and Head Coach Frank Broyles, his staff, Athletic Director John Barnhill, and Jim Bell, the SID here at Arkansas. Later today at 5 Eastern Time, Sonny Liston meets third-ranked Leota Smart live from Las Vegas. Now with a second and three, a minute 22 to go, here is Bill Montgomery. Trying to get Reese. Texas. Texas has come up with a big play. And very fitting, Tom Campbell. He and his twin brother, Mike, are in the secondary for the Texas Longhorns, and their father is Darrell Royal's chief assistant. And that's their father jumping there, Chris. And that's dejection, Chris. Two boys who played is. marvelous games, Montgomery and Maxwell, knowing that with a minute and 13 seconds left, there's very little chance to have the football again unless Texas fumbles. With the ball now at the 21. Jimmy Street, who scored a touchdown and went for two to make it 14-8, then came back to get another touchdown on the board. And Worcester trying to run out the clock, staying on the turf. Let's look at that interception again. There have been many key plays, but none more important than this one. Reese breaking down the field. There's the outside break. Campbell moves in front, and Campbell comes up with the ball. Watch a little joy explode among the Texas players. And on a second down and nine from the 22, Texas moving it on the ground, and the clock moves with them. 31 seconds to go. President Richard Nixon will be in the winner's dressing room. And our ABC live color cameras are there, Bill Fleming. So I 
think it'll be a scene that you would certainly like as uh, the final touch to this, the game of the year. As the nation's number one team, Texas, had to come from behind 14 to nothing to go ahead 15-14 as the clock is stopped unofficially on the board to our right. The south end of Razorback Stadium, six seconds to go. for Frank, the father of six. And there are some of his children with him going to the locker room, but we'll see Arkansas meeting Mississippi and Archie Manning in the Sugar Bowl. While Texas, the number one team, I would assume is well on its way to remaining number one, winning the national championship, and perhaps the MacArthur Bowl, which will be presented in New York Tuesday night, the National Football Hall of Fame dinner where our colleague Bud Wilkinson will be inducted into the Coaching Hall of Fame and President Nixon will receive the coveted gold medal. As you can see, it is absolute madness, I think. All have come on in, raising their hands, number one, hooking boards. It's a happy group down there, isn't it? It's absolutely wild, as you can imagine, Bud and Chris. Well, Dale Royal Bill with his 107th victory. I know he's had a lot of important ones in the past, but I bet he'll say this is this is it. I think the best thing to do here is just stand by and soak it up. Randy Peschel is being hugged by the winning coach. It is Frank Broyles on the right. And he is in with his players in the locker room off here at the south end of the stadium. Now, Darrell's going to say a few words. Just a second. That's a very, very disappointing afternoon for a man who came in here with 15 consecutive victories, but he lost by only one, but that's all it takes. Oh. Coach is leading the team in the Lord's Prayer. And tears of joy streaming down the cheeks of the Texas Longhorns, who have won the big one the hard way. Darrell, let's just get a word with you here. It's one of the greatest victories in all of Texas history. Well, I didn't know if we, we just kept turning the ball over. I really, I, I just don't know what to say. I know in just a few minutes, Darrell, President Nixon will be here to congratulate you and your boys. I'm sure in, during that time, you'll have a chance just to think and reflect about what this really means to you. Well, I already know. <laughs> right. Darrell Royal, the head football coach of the University of Texas, absolutely flabbergasted at this victory. As you know, the Longhorns had to come from behind. They trailed at one point 14 to nothing. And then made the big gamble in going for two after making the touchdown and then winning it 
15 to 14. We understand the president is making his way down toward the dressing room. So Chris and Bob, if you have anything you want to add to this as a postscript, I feel free to do so. Well, Bill, as we had mentioned earlier, and you just brought up that two-point conversion play following a Jimmy Street touchdown, which was sensational in itself, 42 yards. That had to be one of the most courageous calls I think I've ever seen in all uh, over 400 games that we've had the pleasure of televising. And with this the centennial year, I'll just have to say that when you do college football, you, the goosebumps uh, come often. And today was just another one of those examples. And for Daryl Royal, I know that he had a little bit of superstition. I know him very well. This was his 13th year as head coach, Bill, at Texas. And uh, just like all of us, I guess occasionally get superstitious. And I'm sure when he was down 14 to nothing, he could see a national championship here comes, fleeting. Here comes the president, uh, Chris. This is a moment, of course, that these young men have been waiting for. The president of the United States has come into their dressing room, and now they have quieted down considerably, as you can hear, and are greeting him singly as he makes his way toward Daryl Royal and congratulates him. <laughs> Daryl, taking the sincere good wishes from the president, and they will be making their way up here to the platform for a more formal presentation. Every one of the boys anxious to shake the hand of the president. And he, in turn, very anxious to shake theirs. Now he's coming up. Mr. President, oh, how you doing, oh, yeah. sir? Can we get Daryl up here? I know you have a presentation to make. James Street is here. Coy, Daryl, Coach. Here he comes. You chose yourself a football game to attend, didn't you? One of the. There we go. Well, one of the, one of the great games of all time, without question. And uh, I was up in the booth, the ABC booth, uh, at halftime, and incidentally, I got to brag a little. I, I asked me what was going to happen the second half. said both teams were going to score. But that I thought that uh, what would really determine the second half would be whether Texas had the ability in the fourth quarter to come true. And you did. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, we're not How do you feel? All right. I'm, I've got to be the happiest guy in America tonight. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say this uh, in presenting the plaque. Can I <laughs> Presenting this plaque, I, I want to say first that the, the AP and the UPI will name Texas number one, as we know, uh, after this game. And uh, this is a great honor in the 100th year of football. I also want to say that having seen this game, what convinced me that Texas deserves that is the fact that you want a tough one for a team to be behind 14 to nothing and then not to lose its cool and to go on to win. That proves you deserve to be number one, and that's what you are. Well, Mr. President, it's, it's, a, it's a great thrill. It's a great thrill for us to win the football game, but the big thrill, uh, I know I speak for all of our squad, is for the President of the United States to take time to endorse college football and to honor you with our, your presence in our locker room. This is uh, a big moment in all of our lives, and uh, I'm speaking for the coaching staff and all the players. I, I, want, I, I want all of you to know that we didn't make up the plaque in advance. It doesn't say what team, and I'm taking it back to Washington and put in Texas. <laughs> I could add one thing, Darrell, while we were talking here. Uh, I do want to say that uh, that uh, Penn State, of course, uh, felt that uh, I was a little premature in suggesting this. So we're going to present a, a, a plaque to T Penn State as the team in the 100th year with the longest undefeated untied. Is that fair enough? Fair enough. <laughs>
And so a move unprecedented in college football as the President of the United States has appeared in the dressing room of the nation's number one team on this final day of this centennial year of college football, 1969. Now let's go back to our ABC telecast booth and Chris Shackle. Thank you very much, Bill. So for Texas, an 80-yard march in nine plays with a 42-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Jimmy Street. And then he made two on the conversion to make it 14 to 8, and then a 64-yard march with Bertelson scoring. And I might point out, we keep harping on that two-point conversion, but that's the difference of victory, that that was Texas's only two-point conversion of the year. And of course, as President Nixon has been with the, the victors, he is making his way now over to the Arkansas dressing room. Uh, the scene will certainly not be uh, quite as jubilant, quite as happy as we just saw, but it's great to see such a fine man as Darrell Royal uh, so graciously accept the plaque, making them number one from uh, the Commander-in-Chief here in Razorback country, and here is the man that has made the Razorbacks famous, Coach Frank Royals, in his 12th year. Six Southwest Conference titles, including sharing it last year with Texas, but he lost it today. But he uh, was going to take his team into the eighth bowl appearance, and it's the Sugar Bowl, which we at ABC have the pleasure of telecasting on New Year's Day from New Orleans, Louisiana, and the opponent will be Mississippi with quarterback Archie Manning. He's not only thinking of that one-point loss, but anticipating the arrival of President Nixon, who has a tremendous number of fans here who are trying to get his autographs. And this was true when he landed in Air Force One at Fort Smith, Arkansas, and it's been that way all afternoon. And if you heard his halftime comments here, in our telecasting booth, you know that uh, he has a very fine knowledge of football, and he sort of is in the mold of other former presidents who considered football a very important thing, like Woodrow Wilson, who was the Wesleyan coach, Calvin Coolidge, who coached at Amherst, Herbert Hoover, who was the Stanford football manager, and of course, probably the most famous president of all was General Dwight Eisenhower, as a sophomore at West Point, playing halfback and linebacker, and a knee injury a week after playing Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indians ended uh, the general's football playing career. He has a lot of outstanding Americans that played this game. Uh, if you look at the people in the Senate and Congress, 28 United States senators played it. 45 congressmen excelled, 13 ambassadors, 20 governors, 18 full generals and admirals, and I might add, 76 college university presidents played it. And one of the great ones who received the gold medal, which Mr. Nixon will receive on Tuesday night at the Hall of Fame, Dr. Fred Hovde, this week was voted the top NCAA award, the president of Purdue, the Theodore Roosevelt Award. And of course, we can't forget Supreme Court Justice Byron Wizard White, Consensus All-America, halfback of Colorado in 1934. Joining uh, Mr. Nixon here today at this football game that was won by Texas 15 to 14, Congressman Bush, Lieutenant Governor Britt, Governor uh, Winthrop Rockefeller of Arkansas, Senator McClellan of Arkansas, Bryce Harlow, Counselor to the President, Henry Kissinger, Foreign Affairs, Dr. DeCosh, the President's physician, Congressman Pickle of Texas, Senator Tower of Texas, Attorney General Mitchell, Con Congressman Wilbur Mills of Arkansas, along with Congressman Hammerschmidt. Let's Thank you very much, uh, Chris. We're in the Arkansas dressing room right now, and of course it's a great study in contrast to the Longhorn dressing room and Frank Broyles. Uh, I don't know what you can say after your team has played its heart out, given everything they had and still lost out by one. It was a great ball game, Bill, and uh, our team I'm very proud of. They deserve 
uh, everything that they got, and uh, Texas was a great team, too, and it's just too bad someone had to be a loser in that game. I think you're right. I think that's the best way to put it, and unfortunately, that is the way of college football. Somebody has to win, and somebody has to lose, and I don't think we've ever seen it, uh, a game that had harder hitting. Uh, Frank, you saw it from the sidelines. You've been connected with college football for 25 years or so, and I don't know, have you, have you ever seen a game that had that much intensity? Well, both squads were emotionally ready. There was a lot of stake, Bill, and uh, as you know, and, uh, Texas certainly will get all the claim, but uh, I'm very proud of our football. I, I should tell you this. So here comes the president now, Mr. Nixon, to shake hands with Frank Doyle. It's an honor to be here with a great team. Well, thank you, sir. We're proud. We've got yeah. that way, too. It's a, it's a tough a tough assignment, isn't it, to have to, to, well, have I, to do? I'd like to say something to the team, because I know how you, how you feel. I've uh, lost some, in my field of politics, I've lost some close ones, and I've won some close ones. But I, I want you to know that in the 100th year of football, in the game to prove which was to be number one, we couldn't have had a greater game. Uh, Arkansas was magnificent uh, throughout the game. Uh, and uh, Texas, in order to win, had to beat a great team. Uh, on any Saturday, uh, if we were to make a bet, I would say we wouldn't know which team to choose, whether it would be Arkansas or Texas. And I also want you to know this. I think you can be awfully proud of the way your fans are with you. I've never seen stands so full of life. The whole state was behind you. There was a spirit there about it, Coach, and that, that means that your team has done something that's really great for this state. Thank you, sir. We're very proud of our fans. They've had a big part in the success that we've had. Right. But we're doubly proud that you're big sports fans and, yeah. and believe in our program across the state. Yes. This will mean a lot to football for years to come. Well, I just, I know how the fellows feel, you know, after uh, being right up there and uh, being, being, being right down there in that eight-yard line ready to go over and, uh, and then and losing the game after what they've done. But I do know this, that in that Sugar Bowl, watch out. <laughs> That's all. We wish you a fair warning to Mississippi. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> this, right. has been, this has been, of course, yeah. the climax of the yeah. centennial year of college yes. football, and we indeed are very indebted yes. to you, sir, for not only taking your television set to your dentist so you could watch a college game, but That's also right. being here in this final guest. Well, I wouldn't have missed it, and I, I'm just only sorry that both teams couldn't have won. That's Thank all. You, Thank you, fellas. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you sir. Thank you. And now the president leaving the Arkansas dressing room, shaking hands with all the young men who tried so valiantly here today. You know, he's shaking hands with different boys, and uh, you can tell by his comments here, if I can eavesdrop just a moment, about um, how knowledgeable the president is about uh, the game. He was congratulating the center on his outstanding play. Yeah. Th this is... Uh, oh, yeah. Right, I'll tell you, tell you what you reminded me of. Allworth, I'll tell you, uh, the, I, I've seen him play for San Diego, San Diego and uh, you've got his hands and you've got his moves. And I tell you, it was, it was really terrific. Chuck Dykus, All-American end. Hey, tell me, were you, did you? Bill Montgomery. Uh, I noticed you come off with your, with your hands. Uh, you didn't. got stung for a second. Just got stung for a while. I tell you, you you got a lot of poise under fire. Well, thank yeah. you for coming by. Sir. You were, it's quite an honor to meet you. Well, we uh, both teams couldn't win, but I'll tell you, you 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 were as close as you can without winning it. Good luck to you now. Great, great, great. great. You know, Senator Fulbright. Senator Fulbright is standing here with the president. I, I, the tendency is to say offering condolences. That really uh, doesn't fit it. It's it's really congratulations on playing such an outstanding game. And now, back to our telecast booth in Krushenko. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming, Senator Fulbright there with President Nixon, the senator, a former Arkansas football player and Rhodes Scholar. Once again, the final score in the game of the year, any year, Texas 15, Arkansas 14. The Texas-Arkansas game was produced by Chuck Howard and directed by Andy Sedaris. Technical Director, John Allen. Stay tuned now for College Football Today and a special feature devoted to the Heisman Trophy awarded earlier this week to Steve Owens of Oklahoma. Immediately following, we'll bring you a review, <coughs> excuse me, of the 1969 United States Golf Association events, including the sensational win of the United States Open by former Army Sergeant Orville Moody.
This afternoon at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, Wide World of Sports will take you to Las Vegas where former world heavyweight champion Sonny Liston meets Leotis Martin in a 12-round heavyweight fight. Buffaloes. Also next week, we'll be regionally televising the NCAA College Division Bowl games. Be sure to consult your local listings for the time and game in your area.